defensive end, one of the tops in the country. And he's what we call that deal. He is legitimate, a hybrid guy, extremely gifted athletically. He knows how to bend the corner and get to the quarterback. Ten and a half sacks a season ago. You better believe he's going to be in Weber's face all night. In prime time tonight, two programs looking forward to starting anew. Tim Brewster and the Minnesota Golden Gophers open their campaign against the Northern Illinois Huskies next on the Big Ten Network. Crimson would look good on you. We've got a great program here. You like passing? We like passing. You know about our Buckeye leagues, right? We really think you're terrific. You know, we're the winningest program in history. We got this new stadium coming. Well, I'm back at you. We think you're special. We play five quarters. We're going to run the spread. Come help us defend the rock. We're the cradled quarterbacks. You'd look great in black and gold. You can make a difference. You've got what it takes. I thought you told me you want to be the best. Do you like roses? Look, our helmet's got wings. Come to Ohio State. Come to Wisconsin. Indiana. Iowa. Purdue. Illinois. Michigan. Northwestern. Minnesota. Michigan State. Come to Penn State. Big Ten Network football is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Keep the wheels turning. By Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And by Nissan, proud sponsor of the 2008 Heisman Trophy. Shift the way you move through the world. Moments ago here at the Metrodome. The Minnesota Golden Gophers take the field for their 125th season of intercollegiate football. Coin toss, the referee, Mike Cannon. season after a successful run at Southern Illinois, his first season in DeKalb with Northern Illinois. Matter of fact, Jerry's Southern team defeated Northern Illinois last year, and he becomes the head coach succeeding Joe Novak, who did a tremendous job with that program. And Tim Brewster, we've talked to him in his second year here at Minnesota. And uh, you take a look at their situation last year. Very frustrating season. Six losses by seven points or less. But he went out and had one of the top recruiting classes in the country. There's a lot of optimism in this program here. We talked to the quarterback. That's the hardest piece to put in place. Chris, they feel like they've got a great quarterback. And Adam Weber, just a sophomore. And as Weber warms up on the near sidelines below us, he is the first captain in 125 years of Minnesota football, the first sophomore captain ever in the history of this program. And he's the field general for the Gophers, the leader of the team. I asked him what he worked on specifically, and he said just being an overall leader, helping the young guys, bringing them along, and continuing to get his individual game better. Mike Salerno, a transfer out of Winona State, is the new kicker for Northern Illinois. Twin safeties back deep for the Golden Gophers, and we're just about set to get underway. Great to have you with us on this opening evening of college football in the Big Ten Conference. And here comes the kickoff. Good, strong kick. Montel. Jay Thomas out across the 30-yard line gets out to the 35, and it'll be a first down coming up from there. Chase Carter, a cornerback, made the tackle for Northern Illinois. We'll see Jay Thomas play, carry the ball a little bit. He's coming back from a knee surgery, but uh, we'll see him on kickoff returns and uh, in the backfield. For 32 of the receiving team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. See if we can pick it up. Nathan Triplett, the guilty party. Ooh, yeah, that's clearly. a takedown. That's an obvious one. You know, as they say, whenever you can see the name on the back of the jersey, 
Throw your hands up. Adam Weber, sophomore quarterback, Shoreview, Minnesota. Mike Dunbar feels the biggest jump and improvement for a quarterback is from freshman year to sophomore year, providing he played as a freshman, and this one played a lot. He set all kinds of Minnesota passing records as a freshman. First down, football to the 10-yard line. Little screen pass to Decker, got a good block off the flank and picks up yardage out near the 15-yard line. The block was del delayed, but it was a good block by Ralph Spry, and that sprung him for the yardage. Now for the Rotel starting lineup, take a look at it. The skill people, the Eric Decker at wide receiver, a guy they'll feature here tonight. Up front, they're replacing two starters from a year ago, and they've got two freshmen in that starting lineup, as you can see. Second down. Second down at about five. And again, a quick toss to Decker on the flank, and this time he's got the first down or so it would appear across the 20-yard line. Corey Hansen, the linebacker, made the stop. Defensively, now for Northern Illinois, and we'll begin in the trenches. They moved Craig Rush to defensive end opposite the great Larry English. They need those two guys inside to tie people up. The linebackers, Tim McCarthy back in the middle, injured most of last year. And there's a look at the secondary. Two veteran cornerbacks in that secondary. And on the first carry, Dwayne Dewan Bennett gets the call out across the 25 to the 26-yard line. McCarthy in the middle of the Husky defense made the stop. Well, and Wayne, we can see already that the Gophers are setting up the run by passing. This is just an inside trap play to keep the chains moving. That's one of the things they want to do. They want to keep the chains in manageable situations. Make it easy for Weber. Three receivers at the bottom of your screen. One to the top. Weber in the shotgun and he empties the backfield. And the quick screen, a little bit of a bubble screen out there to Dewan Thomas. Good reaction by Josh Allen in the linebacking core. Take a look at the Suzuki ATV's keys to the game. Well, I think I think we've seen it already for Minnesota offensive efficiency. You know, they got it. They got to get it going, and then they got to tackle when they're on defense. For Northern Illinois, they got to establish run dominance and keep the Gophers behind the chains. Get them into third and seven or more. So here are the Golden Gophers facing third down. Third down at a little bit less than five yards to go. Decker wide open, first down. Steered to the chalk marks by Patrick George. Pick up a yardage to the 34-yard line, gain of about 10. Wayne, when you look at Eric Decker, he looks like a possession receiver, but you have to respect his speed. You see this outcut. He runs routes with detail, does a good job of getting to the marker and picking up the first down. They mark it at the 33-yard line. Decker a year ago, extremely effective. Nine touchdowns. He plays baseball here at Minnesota, so he doesn't take part in spring practice. Not much there as they come quickly with the run by Bennett. Bryant and Pruitt on the tackle for Northern Illinois. Pick up of a yard to the 34. And what Mike Dunbar wants is a solid running game, and he feels that the spread offense you can have a thousand yard rusher. Your quarterback doesn't have to lead you in rushing like Weber did a year ago. They had injuries at the tailback position uh, last year. Again, the four wide receivers set, and again they go short to Decker, gets a nice seal block. He's got a first down across the 45 yard line. McCarthy and Pruitt chased him out of bounds. Wayne, you'll see the backside corner is going to blitz on this one. Good job of seeing that by Weber and getting rid of the football, finding his main target thus far, Eric Decker. But you see Northern Illinois, they're going to come with different looks. They got to change it up for Adam Weber because you can't let him sit back there and surgically take you apart. Kuznia made the block that sprung that play. Off play action, Weber going over the top, down the sidelines, overshot as intended receiver, incomplete. Kuznia, the intended receiver, Melvin Rice, the senior had good coverage near the 20 yard line of Northern Illinois. I like what Coach Dunbar's doing thus far. We've seen a variety of plays, bubble screens, inside trap, a little zone read, and now he takes a shot down the field to keep that defense of Northern Illinois on its heels. So it's second down and 10. Everything's been short so far. 
They've got a tight end toe Arnett at the top of your screen. Three receivers to the bottom. Weber quarterback draw. Design play. First down and more. Into Northern Territory to the 39-yard line. Bryant made the tackle for the Huskies. Well, this is what I love about Adam Weber. He's built like a running back. You're going to see the lane just part right in front of him. Good job, Vision, to find it and hit the crease. That was a call play, as you said. And remember, he was the leading rusher for this team a year ago, so they love getting him out in space. 617 rushing yards for Adam Weber. First and 10 at the Husky 39. Bennett, nice move. Cut down by Mike Sobel, the strong safety. A gain of about five yards. Good job of Sobel making a play in the hole. One of the keys to the spread is it makes the defense have to tackle in space. And you'll see him come in the alley. Good job of getting the back on the ground. That's a tough play to make in open grass. Opening drive of the game, Minnesota. Now facing second down and five at the 34 of Northern Illinois. Weber, again, another bubble screen. Decker has it, and the player who blew up that play was Josh Allen, the linebacker. He stacked up the blocking, and then Larry English came over from the line to make the tackle. A gain of about three yards down to the 31, where it's third down and two for Minnesota. Well, and eventually, the defense is going to have to shift its coverage. We've seen so many bubble screens already. Key on Decker. They got to slide their safety down to take that throw away. That's Spry at the top of your screen. Decker's in the slot on the bottom on third down and a little bit of an option play. Weber keeps it. Larry English brings him down, but not before Weber gets three yards for a first down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line of Northern Illinois. There's a final from the Big Ten. Utah hangs on to defeat Michigan. First time the Wolverines have ever lost their home opener two consecutive seasons. Welcome, Rich Rodriguez. First down, Weber again on a quarterback keeper. This time he runs into some traffic. Larry English, the principal defender. Alex Crutch was also there. We should mention it's just the first time since the 51-52 season that Michigan has opened a campaign with losses like that starting the game with a loss, starting the uh, season with a loss in two consecutive years. We'll get it right here in a second. <laughs> second down. First drive of the game, the give Bennett. And once again, Alex Crutch reacting. The senior out of Schaumburg, Illinois, makes the tackle. Short gain. Third down coming up for Minnesota now. And Weber seems to be very decisive with where he wants to go with the football. He's lining up, diagnosing the defense, and taking exactly what the defense has given him. So third down for the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. And this is what you want if you're Northern Illinois. Make it tougher for them to get this first down. Third and six. Out of the shotgun, Bennett alongside Adam Weber. And Weber. Good throw. The defender fell down. Tower Nets got a first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line of Northern Illinois. Allen and Sobel team up on the tackle. The tight end, Nick Tower Net. One of three brothers to play on this Minnesota team this season. Well, Wayne, as my old coach used to tell me, fall on your own time. <laughs> that time McCarthy gets picked off, allows the tight end to create some separation. Credit Tower Arnett on running a good route. First and goal for Minnesota out of the spread. Bennett. They get fake to Bennett, and it is Weber who picks up a couple of yards down to the six-yard line. We are in the hotel.com red zone. Josh Allen makes the tackle on the quarterback after a gain of two to the six-yard line of Northern Illinois. And Brewster, so far, he has to be happy with what he's seeing. Weber is engineering a long drive very methodically down the field, now in the red zone. Drive is nearing eight minutes long. Spread offense on second down and goal to go at the six. Weber to Bennett. 
Bennett inside the five. Chris, a lot of people will tell you that the Achilles heel of the, as they call it here, the spread coast offense or the spread offense is short yardage situations inside the red zone. Well, exactly, because the field shrinks on you. So unless you can line up and just go be a road grader and move bodies out of there, you know, it's tough. And that is one of the drawbacks when you run that spread is when you get close to the goal line, you got to be able to play power football. Spry is at the top of your screen. Decker is in the slot at the bottom of your screen. Third down. They get motion from Simmons, the tight end, and now believe they had a the legal procedure false start. Prior to the snap, false start. Any one of the offense. Still third down. So third down coming up football back near the eight yard line. This is a big stand for Northern Illinois. Keep an eye on Eric Decker. Number seven at the bottom of the screen. Tight slots on each side of the formation on third down. Here's Weber to the end zone. Touchdown Decker. Extended drive. Caps it off with a touchdown, and the Gophers have a 6 0 lead. And that was way too easy for Decker getting inside. Big body kid. The extra point try by Joel Monroe is good. The Gophers take virtually the entire first nine minutes of the first quarter to drive to the lead score. I get out and I ride with my buddies every weekend, you know. We go out and get after it. Like today, we hit one section when everyone stopped, second guessed it, and I just kept going. Rock here, rock there. I just got a handful, and there she went. True all wheel drive, new active descent control, legendary ride and handling. Polaris, the world's toughest ATVs. Polaris Power Play sales event. Get to your participating dealer for up to $800 in rebates and as low as 3.99% APR on select ATVs. What would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song and I'll try not to sing your key. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. Yeah, I'm gonna try with a little help from my friends. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. A little help from my friends. At Hampton, we love having you here. Auto Parts. They'll test the battery. If it's good, great. If it's dead, buy an autocraft and let them drop it in for you. No charge. Whatever you need, Advance will help you keep the wheels turning. All right, let the journey begin. This week on the series premiere of Illinois football, The Journey. Expectations are high in Champaign. People are expecting not just a bowl bid, they're expecting a big bowl bid. There's no reason why we shouldn't have the same opportunity as anyone else to, to win the conference. As the Illini prepare for a season as the hunted in the Big Ten. College football is a what have you done for me lately kind of world, so you got to get it done every day. <laughs> Illinois football, The Journey, Tuesday at 9.30 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. 857 time of possession the opening drive of the season for Minnesota 18 plays 90 yards eight yard touchdown pass from Weber to Eric Decker Joel Monroe getting set to kick it away Monroe had 39 touchbacks a season ago booms this kick 
And here comes Miko Brown, the freshman for Northern Illinois, out across the 20 yard line to the 21. Return of about 24 yards. Marcus Sherrills makes this tackle for Minnesota. Wayne, it's important for Northern Illinois to take a punch. Weber sliced him up on a 90 yard drive, camping it to Decker. Minnesota 7, Northern nothing. A work of art, a finely tuned machine, a sanctuary, a command center, a sophisticated sedan, a sports car. Together. Introducing the all new Nissan Maxima, the four door sports car. Lease a new 2009 Nissan Maxima for $339 a month for 39 months. Made from fresh tomatoes living happily together with spicy green chilies. The bold flavor of Rotel gives your queso a kick. Spice things up with Rotel. A lot goes through your mind after an accident. But with Liberty Mutual, insurance issues won't. Because we offer unlimited rental coverage, new car replacement, and accident forgiveness to help ease your mind. And that's our policy. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Hey, honey, two shampoos. Maybe they're just buying you off so you write a good review. It's working. It's working. Ah, oh, they got me. Ah, oh, it's working. A million guest reviews from people like you. Welcome to Hotels.com. such thing as too much performance, especially when it comes to high-yielding Mycogen brand grain corn hybrids. Next Saturday on the Big Ten Network, Travis Beckham looks to show why he's one of the nation's best when he leads the Badgers into a collision with a thundering herd. Next Saturday at High Def, only on the Big Ten Network. Big Ten tonight, every night, only on the Big Ten Network. Wayne Larrabee, Chris Martin, Ron Johnson back in Minneapolis. Northern Illinois, the offense led by Chandler Harnish, the first freshman true or redshirt to start a season opener for the Huskies since 1985. And Harnish on the handoff to Anderson trying to spit away, gets what he can, gain of a yard basically. Chris, take a look at the last touchdown. The Minnesota touchdown, eight-yard scoring strike to Decker. Well, Eric Decker had six receptions on that last drive, but he has a big target, and he has a nice catch and radius, so you can expect them to work the inside of the field, particularly when they get close to the goal line. 18-play drive, my goodness. Second down and nine for the Huskies out of the shotgun formation. Three receivers set. Anderson. And it appears in the early going that out of these spread formations, Northern will run first. Lee Campbell makes the tackle. Rotel starting lineups. And there are a look at the skill position players. Anderson rushed for 1,000 yards last season. Davis is the target downfield to look for. On the offensive line, this is a pretty solid group. Eddie Adamski is a third year starter at center. Third down for Northern Illinois, about eight yards to go. Certainly not the position you would want a redshirt freshman quarterback to be in. But at some point, you got to go under the hood and see exactly what he's made of. Harnish out of Bluffton, Indiana, facing third down and eight. And a timeout taken by Minnesota. Ted Roof apparently did not have his people where he wanted them. And they get a timeout called here with 4.35 to go in this first quarter. Minnesota off an 18 play drive that took nearly nine minutes off the top of this ball game has the lead 7 nothing over Northern Illinois.
The Sparty Statue. Protecting it is a Michigan State tradition, because throughout history, Spartan warriors have stood vigilant against Romans, Persians, and Wolverines. Who goes there? Guard on, soldier. This is Big Ten country, and this is where it lives. Big Ten Football Saturday, next week, only on the Big Ten Network. Well, here we go. They're trying to become bowl eligible. They have a sellout crowd. They're playing their in-state rival. And they're playing after losing their head coach to brain cancer. The snap, the hold, the kick, it is... will play in a 13th game. Relive the drama with the Big Ten's greatest games. Every week, take another look into the conference's rich football history. The incredible performances. The intense rivalries. The nail-biting finishes. And the unforgettable moments. The Big Ten's Greatest Games, only on the Big Ten Network. Success for Minnesota on the opening drive of the season. Northern Illinois, their first offensive drive of the campaign. Facing third down and about eight yards to go. Chandler Harnish gets away for the first down. Out across the 35-yard line. Willie Van finally brought him down. 12-yard run. Well, and Harnish doing his best. Adam Weber impersonation. Just a quarterback draw. Gets good blocking up front. A simple play for the quarterback. Not trying to do too much too fast. Love the call by Coach Kill and his staff. So, first down. Football marked just across the 36-yard line. Short of the 37. Northern Illinois and the traveling whites. Black helmet. Black pants. Anderson accelerates. Good move right there. He read that beautifully. Chris takes it up the middle for a gain of about six yards to the 42. Deion Hightower makes the tackle. There's a look at the Minnesota defense. Van de Steeg, disappointing season last year. Looking to bounce back this season. Deion Hightower in that linebacking core. He and Steve Davis went at it in the fall camp. They'll both play a lot. We mentioned Lee Campbell in the middle of the defense, moving from defensive end to middle linebacker. Second down. And it looked like Anderson stumbled just a bit, and he loses a yard, leaving a third down coming up at about six yards to go. Rotel starting lineups. Let's see if we get to him again. Here we go. Garrett Brown, Eric Small, and both have remade their bodies in different ways up front on that defensive line. You look at the linebackers, Campbell provides the uh, teeth in that linebacking core, former defensive end. And in the secondary, a lot of changes for Minnesota in their secondary that we'll get to in a moment. Third down for Northern Illinois once again. Chandler Arnish, the option. Getting to the outside and unable to get away. A great play made by the safety, Tremaine Block. As he knocks down, Ricky Kreider trying to get around the end. Excellent play. Harnish does a good job of seeing the end get up the field. You'll see 91 pitching it off to his back. But this is just a better play. Watch again, tackling in space. Keep in mind that it's such an emphasis on tackling. Minnesota was horrible at it last year. So far, they're doing it well. Brock, the junior college transfer, the big addition to this secondary. Dick Benner, the putter. Hangs it high, and a fair catch signal made, and the catch completed. Andy Dittbenner is one of the better punters in the country, set NIU records for season punting average at 43.5 yards per punt. 
And Mike Sherrills uh, makes the, uh, I beg your pardon, make that uh, Marcus Sherrills makes the uh, fair catch signal. Now, for Nissan's what it takes to get there. This week we focus on uh, these items for Minnesota. Well, and the big one for Minnesota is right there. I mean, they got to tackle. Last, last year they were not so good at it. So far they have tackled well in space. See if they can keep it going. Nissan shipped performance. On first down, Bennett once again out to the 21-yard line on a gain of four. Bryant and McCarthy on the stop for Northern Illinois. So Northern Illinois went eight plays, 20 yards, and had to give it up. This is Minnesota's second possession of the evening. Second down. Dewan Bennett again in finding the uh, sledding a little bit tough gain of about a yard. Third member of our team here tonight, Ron Johnson down to the sidelines. Ron, how you doing? I'm doing well. At the top of the broadcast, Wayne, you talked about this being the final opener at the Metrodome for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. They came here in 1982, and yesterday Tim Brewster rattled off some numbers. He said six national titles, 18 Big Ten titles, all of those on campus, none here at the Dome. They're excited to get back to campus next year at TCF Bank Stadium. Thank you, Ron. Third and five for Minnesota from the Gopher, 23. Blitz coming. Weber able to escape. Unable to make a play. Boy, he did well because Mike Kritikos came in big time on the blitz that time. He was able to circle around and get to the quarterback, forcing that errant throw. And I'll tell you what, Weber did well just to get, a, get rid of it. Well, and that's exactly what you have to do if you're Northern Illinois. you got to bring the heat to Weber, make him move his feet. You'll see the linebacker coming off the edge right there. He doesn't get him down, but he does get him rattled, so he has to get rid of the football. Nice call defensively by Northern Illinois. Final minute, first quarter. Justin Kusick in a punt formation. Beautiful kick. Fair catch signal made and the catch completed by Miko Brown. And it'll be first down for Northern Illinois. 26-yard line of the Huskies. We'd like to extend a special welcome to all those subscribers of Comcast, Charter, Time Warner, and Mediacom who are seeing the Big Ten Network for the first time this season. We're happy to have you on board, and we know you'll enjoy having the Big Ten Network on your lineup all year long. First down for Northern Illinois. Chandler Harnish, redshirt freshman starting at quarterback. Nice move. Good move to the outside and a fine run by Justin Anderson, the junior out of Chicago, Illinois, a preseason all-max selection. He's got the first down on a gain of 11. All great backs have good vision and good cutback ability. You see it here. Watch him make a jump cut in the hole and find the crease and now protect the football. Excellent run. Picking up the first down for the Huskies. Here's a look at the 1,000-yard rushers. Nine consecutive seasons with a runner gaining 1,000 yards at Northern Illinois. That is There's incredible. Big names on that list, too. Now we've got a false start on the Huskies. This will back them up. Prior to the snap, false start, 62 offense. Repeat first down. I mentioned Harnish the first. Oh, you look at the left side of the line. There it is. Good job of pointing it out. It looked like Trevor Olson flinched just a bit, and the Gophers made sure the officials didn't miss that call. First quarter winds to a close here in Minneapolis. Minnesota took the opening drive of the game. 18 plays, 8 minutes, 57 seconds, covering 90 yards. And the final 8 yards, a touchdown pass from sophomore Adam Weber to Eric Decker. Minnesota has the lead at the end of one here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Second quarter coming up. Northern Illinois facing first and 15 when we resume.
countless accolades, multiple championships, no equal. Suzuki. shot I just kind of ran over and was in disbelief and then all of my uh, teammates came over and tackled me and it was, it was pretty fun. Looking to enhance your game day experience? Presenting the Rotel Ultimate Tailgate Package Sweepstakes. You could win an incredible grand prize package featuring a grill, barbecue sack, delicious Rotel products, and everything else you'll need to support your team or other great weekly prizes. To enter, log on to Big10Network.com and fill out an entry form or send a postcard to the address on your screen. Don't miss out. Enter the Rotel Ultimate Tailgate Package Sweepstakes today. The one show that covers everything Big Ten, Big Ten Tonight. Get football news from people dialed into the conference all week long. The running game all stars with Keith Williams. Exclusive interviews. I don't think about the last this or the last that. And expert analysis of the games and matchups that matter to you. Well, I see Ohio State being able to beat Southern Cal without question. The only nightly sports show dedicated to the Big Ten. Big Ten Tonight, every night, only on the Big Ten Network. You've got to be pretty darn big to be a Boilermaker. And that's just the marching band. This is Big Ten country. And this is where it lives. Big Ten Football Saturday, next week, only on the Big Ten Network. One of the most heavily recruited players in the country. Aurelius Ben, the electrifying freshman, breaks it to the inside. Still on his feet. And no one will catch Aurelius Ben. Touchdown, Illinois. First down throw and catch to Aurelius Ben. Still on his feet. Still on his feet. Touchdown, Ben. Ben is as advertised. Illinois football, the journey, Tuesday at 9.30 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. Minnesota leading 7-0 as we start the second quarter. Chandler Harnish, I mentioned the first freshman true or redshirt to start a game to start the opener for Northern Illinois since 1985. First down and 15 off the penalty on the left tackle Trevor Olson. Little bubble screen, Britt Olson gets the call. And he's got good chunky yardage out to the 44-yard line. Deion Hightower get over to make the stop. Northern Illinois so far showing a number of looks. They go to the spread here, complete a screen to Britt Davis. Good job of picking up the first down. So, so far we've seen them in a number of formations. We've seen some two back, one back, and uh, four wide. The last freshman quarterback to start for Northern Illinois was Dan Nicholson back in 2005, and he is the senior quarterback on the bench at the moment. Second down and five off the gain of 15 on the previous play. Quarterback draw. Chandler Harness shot near the midfield marker. That's enough for the first down on a gain of six or seven yards. Chris, you got a senior quarterback. I know he comes off a shoulder injury from last year, but Nicholson is healthy now. They made the decision to go with Chandler Harnish. And, and is this part of the reason why his ability to move the ball with his feet? Well, exactly. And we talked about it in the open with Adam Weber. You have a dual threat guy. It is hard to defend, and it keeps defensive coordinators up at night trying to figure it out. You know, a kid that can extend plays with his feet and also be able to beat you with his arm. First and 10 at the 49. Bubble screen. Nice move by Brett Olson. Gets down to the Minnesota 43-yard line on a gain of eight yards. Kyle Thoreau made the stop. Well, these two teams, it's like looking in the mirror because they're doing the exact same thing. They go spread again to Britt Davis. Opposite side, same play. 
And again, what it makes you do is you have to tackle in space. That time, Minnesota wasn't able to get him down with the first defender. Give a gain of nine. Davis last year, 39 catches, 391 yards. Second and short, straight eye. Anderson, the tail of the tandem. Justin Anderson to the fourth. Down to the 35-yard line of Minnesota, Marcus Sherrills makes the tackle. I like Anderson. He's a downhill runner. Once he gets his pads down, watch the cutback once again, finds the lane, so it talks about his vision, and he's able to make people miss in space and deliver a blow. Keep in mind, he's 225 pounds, so when he gets rolling, he's like a bowling ball. He's tough to bring down. And again, Anderson in the eye formation, the tailback. Little play action, good protection. Open receiver downfield. That's the wide receiver, Matt Simon, inside the Minnesota 10-yard line. Tremaine Brock got over to bring him down, but it's a first and goal to the 9-yard line for Northern Illinois on a 26-yard pass play. Well, you ask yourself, does uh, offensive coordinator Matt Limegrover have confidence in his quarterback? I think it's just answered right there. You throw a deep corner route, about as long a throw as you can throw on the field, Good job of putting it on the numbers of Simon. Looked like a pretty good route run by Matt Simon, the senior from Farmington, Minnesota. Seven Huskies are Minnesota natives. And they were really looking forward to this game. First and goal. Anderson with authority down to the five-yard line. Gain of four. Lee Campbell on the tackle for Minnesota. Brandon Beal slow to get up for Jerry Kill's team, so they'll make a change at tight end. We are in the Hotel.com red zone now. First time for Northern Illinois. Minnesota in the red zone was successful on its opening drive of the game. Let's see if Northern Illinois can answer here. Early going second quarter. That's Britt Davis at the top of your screen. Two tight ends on the line. Harnish. Got his man out of bounds on the near sideline. That time they went to the fullback, Kyle Scarb, inside the five. And Davis, the linebacker, Ferret, the defensive back, make the tackle. It's third down for Northern Illinois. The football just inside the three. We talked to Coach Brewster about his defense, and he said his guys are bigger, stronger, and faster. You see a nice close and also help coming out. Good job of getting to the football. Third down, two and a half yards away. Justin Anderson, the tail of the tandem in the eye. That's Davis at the bottom of your screen. Anderson gets the call. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Justin Anderson, who ran for 1,245 yards and eight touchdowns a year ago, carried the mail on that drive for Northern Illinois. Well, and you talk about running behind your pads. Watch this ISO number 27 in the hole, make the play. Not so much. Good job by Justin Anderson getting in the house. Mike Salerno for the point after. And he drills it through. So Northern Illinois answers Minnesota's game opening drive with the first drive of the second quarter. We're tied at seven in the first half from Minneapolis. There's only one utility vehicle that can do it all. Only one that can outrun. Only one that can outpull. Only one that can outride. And only one that can outwork every utility vehicle out there. Only Ranger. Hardest working, smoothest riding. Get financing as low as 2.99% and up to $800 during a Power Play sales event. Hey, honey, two shampoos. Maybe they're just buying you off so you write a good review. It's working. It's working. Ah, uh, like. Got me. Ah, oh, it's working. A million guest reviews from people like you. Welcome to Hotels.com. 
made from fresh tomatoes living happily together with spicy green chilies. The bold flavor of Rotel gives your queso a kick. Spice things up with Rotel. such thing as too much performance, especially when it comes to high-yielding Mycogen brand grain corn hybrids. Northern Illinois on the board with a nine-play, 74-yard drive. Justin Anderson, two-yard touchdown run. I mentioned he carried the mail on that drive. Eight rushes, 31 rushing yards for Anderson. Twin safeties back deep for Minnesota. Salerno's kickoff. Good move by Jay Thomas. Hurdles a defender across the 30 out across the 35 yard line. Melvin Rice finally got him to the turf. Jay Thomas showing a little scoot on kickoff returns here tonight. Oh, yeah, he is. He's doing his thing. Showing that he's back from injury. Good blocking up front. Poor lane execution by Northern Illinois. And good job of making someone miss in the open field. Jay Thomas has had ACL reconstruction on both knees during his Minnesota career. But uh, he looks healthy now. Yeah, he flashed some speed there. First and 10, Minnesota. Football 37 yard line, go for territory. Still over 10 and a half minutes to go, first half. Adam Weber. Off play action, now being rushed. Nearly through an interception, almost picked off by David Bryant. That pass was well off the mark. He was harried by Tim McCarthy, the blitzing linebacker. The scoring drive for Northern Illinois just a moment ago. Here you go. Anderson, the touchdown run. Harnish very good on that drive, including he converted with his feet on a key third down with an eight-yard run. Oh, exactly. Looked very comfortable in the system. Second and ten. Weber, knocked down, incomplete. Brandon Bice, the defensive end, put some pressure on the quarterback, and he couldn't quite loft it over him. He was trying to set up a screen. And third and ten. Coming up, the Big Ten tonight. Highlight scores from all the games in the Big Ten Conference. Big Ten tonight, 11 Eastern, 10 Central, only on the Big Ten Network. Your ultimate source for all things Big Ten. Third down. Third and ten for the Gophers. Northern backs out of a blitz. They're coming in with a four-man rush. Weber has time. Got his man open out of bounds. And it's a first down. Ralph Spry, good footwork in front of the Minnesota bench. 46-yard line, but he's short of the first down. Well, and that's where Spry is showing some inexperience and youthfulness. He has to push that route further up. We'll get a good look at it. Nice job by the crew there. You see he puts it up just shy of the first down marker. A veteran receiver would push that route past the sticks before they break on you the You know, outcome. I'm not sure he got both feet down and bounds from the replay we just saw. Are you? It I looked like he pointed the toe. It was real close. <laughs> but the Gophers send on the punting unit. Justin Kusick. His punt backs up on him. Back across the 25-yard line near the 27. Northern Illinois will take over first and 10. Good ball game brewing in 
in the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Northern Illinois tied at seven. What happens when designers imagine a refined sedan while engineers craft a powerful sports car? What happens? You get something better than both. Introducing the all-new Nissan Maxima, the four-door sports car. Lease a new 2009 Nissan Maxima for $339 a month for 39 months. Flush out the old, pour in the new. Get advanced auto parts 50-50 antifreeze for just $6.98 a gallon. Sale ends August 30th. So whatever you're working on, Advance will help you keep the wheels turning. What would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song and I'll try not to sing out of key. Hampton, we love having you here. Countless accolades. Multiple championships. No equal. Suzuki. Men's soccer takes center stage on the Big Ten Network. Be a part of the excitement as the conference's best kick into high gear on the road to a championship. Big Ten men's soccer all season long on the Big Ten Network. You're watching the Big Ten Network. Tied at seven apiece, second quarter. We take a look at the Advance Auto Parts Road to the Championship standings, and these are media selections in the preseason. Ohio State, Wisconsin, Illinois. Beanie Wells was shaken up, foot injury today at Ohio State, and they're shut out of Youngstown State. And he, uh, the X-rays were negative, we're told, and he is week to week. Northern starts first and 10, and this is Montel Clanton who gets the call. Clanton began last season as the starting running back, but suffered season-ending knee surgery for the second consecutive year, week two last year. Barrett Mowen on the tackle. Derek Onwachi was also there for Minnesota. Well, Chris, we expected a good one. You know, the Huskies bring, as we pointed out earlier, a lot of experience into this game. They were 2-10 and ten a year ago, but a lot of that had to do with an unbelievable amount of injuries. Chandler Harnish, been pretty solid at quarterback here in this first half. Harnish on the roll. Throws a strike just short of the first down. Catch completed by Landon Cox, sophomore receiver out of Thornton Fractional North High School in Calumet City, Illinois. Trey Simmons responding from the secondary. Wayne, a lot of times when you're developing and you're a young quarterback, you like to roll them out and get them into throws. They're a lot safer, a lot easier. Nice call, just allow them to get into rhythm, continue to manage the football game. It's a third down and three. Harnish, five for five, 55 yards passing. Northern Illinois from the Husky 34. Harnish. Good throw on the run and the catch completed by Reed Cunningham across the midfield marker to the Minnesota 49 yard line. Well, I tell you, that took a long time to complete. Well, it did, and this is a major league throw, folks. I mean, rolling out on the right, throwing across his body, giving you an example of his arm strength. Chandler Harnish, looking like that guy. Cunningham started his move inside and then had to come all the way back outside on that play. It takes some time, and Harnish showed, as you mentioned, good accuracy on the move. 
Now out of the straight eye formation. Montel Clanton is the tailback, and Clanton gets the call into the hole. Fumble the football, and the Gophers say they've got it. Simone Lawrence made the hit. Garrett Brown recovered it. Simone Lawrence, the freshman from Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. They talked of him yesterday, Chris, calling him a lightning hitter. Well, they did. They said he's the most explosive hitter on their team, and you see it right here. A good example of that. He puts the face mask right on the ball, exactly what you teach, and causes a turnover. So the first turnover of the game. And Minnesota has it, 49-yard line of the Huskies. This is what they did last year defensively, and they've got many changes, obviously, this year. Penalty markers down on the first snap on this particular drive. Perhaps for a false start. Generally, in the first week of the season, you see some of these things because some of these pre-snap penalties, because the kids are so keyed up, Chris. You know, it's... Prior to the snap. Everybody is so geared up and ready to go. And yeah, there's a lot of nerves. And I think, too, when you, when you play across from a guy like Larry English, sometimes you want to get back in your stance and your set because you know he's so speedy coming off the edge. So Weber on first down. First and 15 from his 46. English brought some heat. Weber equal to the task. In the Husky territory and close to the first down, about three yards short to the 42-yard line. David Bryant made the hit on the play. English provided the pass rush pressure, Chris. Well, once again, you're just going to see a simple quarterback draw. Nice job of Weber letting things unfold and then waiting for the lane to open up as it does. Good blocking up front by the Big Hogs. And nice blocking down the field. You're right. That was a draw, and he let Larry English come into the backfield and then went right through the hole, English vacated. First down, and Dewan Bennett gets the call. David Bryant, defensive back, made the stop for Northern Illinois. So Minnesota trying to capitalize on the first turnover of the game. A fumble recovery by Garrett Brown. And they have moved to the Northern Illinois 37-yard line, first and 10. Offensive efficiency, you can't say it enough with Minnesota. And it starts with Weber making good reads. Northern coming with a blitz off the edge. Oh, beautiful throw by Weber to Jack Simmons, the tight end. He threaded the needle through two defenders, and Simmons has a first down inside the 25 of the 23-yard line of Northern. Oh, Wayne, no football talk. This is just a hot route. Good job by Adam Weber seeing the blitz. What you like to do as a football team is throw directly where the blitz is coming from. Excellent execution up front by the blockers and good delivery by Weber. Weber told us yesterday he is seeing the field much better. Wants to be aggressive but intelligent at the same time, and he has been very cool here tonight. A little screen pass to Beck. This time the Huskies are waiting for him. Led by Alex Kuba and Mike Sobel. Kuba linebacker, Sobel the safety. Gain of barely a yard down to the 23. Good job by Northern Illinois that time swarming to the football. Saw three and four jerseys over there. It's what you want to do when you're playing the spread. Don't rely on one guy to make the tackle. Keep hustling to the ball. Tim Brewster looking on. A little over six minutes to go in this first half. Weber. Decker. Incomplete off his hands. Coverage provided by David Bryant. I'll tell you what, Decker uses his body very well. He had position on that play. Well, you talk about his catching radius, and that means the target that he gives you. You're going to get a corner route right there in cover two. He gets up there on the safety, goes towards the corner. I think the crowd is yelling for interference there. But good job. Northern Illinois sitting back in two deep coverage. What you get when you have that coverage is corner outs. Nice play by the defense. Third and nine. Weber. Going to the end zone. Decker, touchdown. Or is 
season. The officials aren't conferring. Melvin Rice was in the shirt of Eric Decker. Rice came away with a football, and I'm wondering if they may award it to Northern Illinois. come away with it. Let's see if anyone caught it. That ball's coming out. No. Or is it? Did he have possession long enough in there? Melvin Rice unable to come up with a handle himself. I think he controlled it at the end. Did a nice job of protecting it with his body. That's a touchdown. I think Tim Brewster's going to challenge this call. And he should. And again, coaches get one challenge per game unless that challenge is ruled in their favor, and then they would get another one, but no more than two. Well, and as Decker was explaining on the sideline, he rolls on his back, and you see clear possession of the football. It is not moving. That's six points, folks. Melvin Rice came away with it like he had an interception, but watch the end of the play here. Is that ball coming loose there? Can't see. He's down now, but yeah. the, the ruling has to be, is there enough video evidence to suggest that Decker had possession of the ball when his back hit the ground? Because that's when the play is over. I think this is probably the best angle here. Watch him protect it with his back. Incomplete pass. It is fourth down. Yes, it wasn't indisputable. So Coach Brewster, that will be the last challenge for him tonight. But what you saw there to set up the play was Northern Illinois going man coverage one-on-one -on -one to Decker. That's how he was able to get behind the cornerback. It's an incomplete pass. And now Joel Monroe. For a field goal try of 40 yards. He has never missed a field goal from 40 yards or less. 10 for 13 in his career overall. And this field goal attempt is up and it is good. So Joel Monroe, the senior from Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, puts the Gophers back on top. 6.02 to go first half. Nice recovery by Melvin Rice to prevent the touchdown, but Minnesota takes the lead on the 40-yard field goal. Okay, give me my remote. Get it, Jim. You had way too much cable. Uh, you said you were going to get direct TV. I'm fine. Really. So digital picture doesn't mean anything to you? But what about your friends and your family? I just want to watch the game. That's the cable talking, Jim. That game isn't even in HD. Friends don't let friends watch cable. Refer a friend or family member to direct TV, and you'll get $50, and they'll get $50 on top of our best offer. That's 4,032 angles we didn't already have for just a few dollars per race. It made so much sense, so I said, let's get it, and he said, yes! So we got it. NASCAR Hot Pass puts you behind the wheel. Now in high definition, only on DirecTV. The one show that covers everything Big Ten, Big Ten Tonight. Get football news from people dialed into the conference all week long. The running game all stars with Keith Williams. Exclusive interviews. I don't think about the last this or the last that. And expert analysis of the games and matchups that matter to you. Well, I see Ohio State being able to beat Southern Cal without question. The only nightly sports show dedicated to the Big Ten. Big Ten Tonight, every night, only on the Big Ten Network. All right, let the journey begin. This week on the series premiere of Illinois football, The Journey. Expectations are high in Champaign. People are expecting not just a bowl bid, they're expecting a big bowl bid. There's no reason why we shouldn't have the same opportunity as anyone else to, to win the conference. As the Illini prepare for a season as the hunted in the Big Ten. College football is a what have you done for me lately kind of world, so you got to get it done every day. <laughs> Illinois football, The Journey, Tuesday at 9.30 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network.
Minnesota takes the lead 10-7 over Northern Illinois a little over six minutes ago second quarter. Looking to enhance your game day experience? Presenting the Rotel Ultimate Tailgate Package Sweepstakes. You can win an incredible grand prize package featuring a grill, barbecue set, delicious Rotel products, and everything else you need to support your team or other great weekly prizes. To enter, log on to Big10Network.com and fill out an entry form. Monroe's kickoff. Nico Brown, the freshman, quickly to the 20. Does not make the 25. Ryan Collado, the principal defender for Minnesota, Northern Illinois, first and 10. Tell you, Nico Brown, we got a shot of the young guy there. He's going to be something for Northern Illinois. Six plays and 26 yards off the fumble recovery at the 49 of Northern Illinois for Minnesota to take the lead. Chandler Harnish back on the field. He got an opportunity really in spring ball when Dan Nicholson was still nursing that shoulder injury. Harnish was able to show this staff what he could do, and it paid off. Justin Anderson, good-looking runner. Nice undercut move made by Brock, the safety. Tremaine Brock, I mentioned him. A junior out of Long Beach, Mississippi. Mississippi Gulf Coast Junior College. Highly decorated. And his uh, junior college team, very successful. And one thing that uh, Adam Weber mentioned to us, with a lot of the new kids that came into this Minnesota program this year, they came from successful programs, winning programs. And that has certainly helped. Well, yeah, they're mission ready. And, you know, they're ready to go right from from day one. Brock certainly one of those guys. You have to upgrade your secondary. He's one way how you do it. Second and six. Anderson. Nowhere this time. Matter of fact, they have lost a yard. Excellent penetration. Dion Hightower, the senior from Arlington, Texas. Finished second on the team with 70 tackles a season ago. Played the entire season with a torn labrum in his left shoulder. Well, you see exactly what Coach Roof is doing defensively and how the defense varies from a year ago. This is an attack downhill defense. He's shooting the gaps. He's bringing a lot of blitzes. And, you know, we had a chance to talk to him about that. He said, look, don't stutter in the hole. Go take your shot. I love that mentality. Northern facing third and seven. Huskies are three of four on third down conversions. Harnish stands in against the rush. Diving attempt made, but it's incomplete. Brett Davis could not come up with it. Van der Steeg on the pass rush and Campbell collapsing the pocket as well. And it's fourth down, Northern Illinois. Well, pressure burst pipes. Bringing, bringing the aggressiveness again. Oh, you think give him a little kiss there. <laughs> Lee Campbell. What did you say? What did Brewster said? We moved him to middle linebacker because I believe the middle linebacker of a football team should be nasty. Yeah. <laughs> you saw it there. So Lee Campbell goes from defensive end back to linebacker. Actually, that's Campbell's natural position. Dick Benner in punt formation. He's a good one, and he hangs this one high. Matter of fact, we're outdoors. It might bring rain. <laughs> Fair catch signal made at the 34, and it's first and 10 for Minnesota from there. Liberty Mutual alumni spotlight, and of course we're spotlighting Minnesota. Bronco Nagurski, I tell you, that name means football. Played back in the late 20s. Bud Grant, people don't realize what a tremendous athlete he was here at the University of Minnesota. Carl Eller, his fame, most people know him from the Minnesota Vikings before that, played for the Golden Gophers. All those folks played up on campus. And these folks will be back on campus next year. Gain of about to three yards there. Brandon Bites, the defensive end, able to cut him off. Dwan Bennett getting a workout here tonight. Sophomore out of Fairview Heights, Illinois. Adam Weber running the attack and a good crowd on opening night on hand for the Gophers in this their final season here in the Metrodome. We talked to defensive coordinator Coach Clays about his team and setting a temperament. He said it starts with his safeties. How they play will determine how the whole defense plays. Second down. 
The fake to Bennett. Weber on his own and going nowhere. Loss of a couple of yards. Tim McCarthy, the linebacker, made the play on that. Senior out of Nino, Wisconsin. His brother played here at the University of Minnesota. And Adam Weber's not easy to bring down. He's 220 pounds. That's a good job of running through contact and getting him on the ground. McCarthy missed most of last year, Chris, due to injury. Key to this defense. Uh, he had racked up 100-plus tackles in each of his first two seasons at Northern Illinois. Again, we talk about keeping Minnesota behind the chains. This is third and eight, exactly what you want if you're Northern Illinois. Weber with two receivers to each side of the formation. Pass time. Incomplete. Looked like he was trying to get it downfield to Ben Kuznia. And Northern's defense proves to be staunch right there, forcing a 1 2 3 and out. Well, and you know why? Because here's your guy that we showcase. Watch him come off the edge. This is going to be impressive. Watch this burst. So Weber's feeling that. Does a good job sliding in the pocket and getting rid of the football. But we kind of joked with Weber. We said, are you going to know where Larry English is on every play? He said, you better believe it. He's the first <laughs> guy I'm looking for. He had his number memorized and everything, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, punt, block. And it's going to be Northern ball. Tracy Wilson comes up with it. Chad Spahn blocked it. So often in early football games, particularly in the early part of the year, it comes down to special teams. Talking about coming out and making a play. Good job of reaching out and extending to take the ball off the foot. It looked like Chad Spahn, a backup running back, got in there to take it down. And then quick to the football, number 25, Tracy Wilson. So a big break for Northern Illinois, one that they forced. And they've got a golden opportunity now, so to speak. At the Gopher, 28. Incomplete, Simon, the intended receiver, had position on the coverage of Trey Simmons, but could not haul it in. Stay tuned, Buffalo Wild Wings halftime show scores and highlights from today's game. And we'll also uh, get an update on Beanie Wells, the Heisman candidate, the running back at Ohio State who suffered a foot injury earlier today in their victory over Youngstown State. Second down and 10. Northern went for the kill right away off the turnover. Now, this is a planned quarterback draw. Arnish unable to get away. Simone Lawrence, the freshman. I'll tell you something, you folks, you're going to be hearing about this young man a lot. Well, he doesn't. Freshman play. out of Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. He makes a sure tackle. And Wayne, he doesn't play like a freshman. I mean, you talk about a thumper. Watch this guy close to the ball, and he's able to get him down. He, he's not looking to just arm tackle. He wants to put a hit on someone. <laughs> he pulled out that towel. He's grabbing anything. <laughs> he grabbed it all. Gain of about three, and it's third down. A little bit more than six yards to go, but we'll call it third and six. NIU three of five on third down conversions. Bubble screen. Well defended. Brett Davis had no chance. Threat, the safety, the other safety, Tremaine Brock, all over that play. Fourth down. Good job of sniffing out the bubble screen by Thayer. And once he diagnoses it, coming downhill and making a play. I mean, that, he's showing his range there. 20 yards off the ball, way to read and react. Apparently, Jerry Kill is not going to send the field goal unit on here. Again, Mike Salerno is the new kicker, a junior out of Orland Park, Illinois, transfer from Winona State. But Northern Illinois is facing a fourth down at about five, 22-yard line, Minnesota territory. And that must be a function of his confidence or lack of confidence in his kicker, because I think he, he put this one, he trying to kick this thing. A minute left to go in this first half and a timeout taken by Northern Illinois. Don't forget, Dave Rebson, Jerry DiNardo, Howard Griffith, and the boys back in the studio update you on the complete day of the Big Ten. And 
Chris, we expected a good one here. We knew this Northern Illinois came, team came in here with a lot of experience. They are battle tested. Well, yeah, and you're looking at a team that was two and ten last year, just like Minnesota, one and eleven. These guys, they have a lot to prove. I mean, they have a lot to prove to their fans, the coaches, and their teammates themselves. So you knew they were going to ball their fists up and fight, and that's exactly what we're seeing. Adam Weber been very impressive here tonight. Chandler Harnish, you understand once you watch him play why they went with a redshirt freshman over a senior at quarterback. He fits what they like to do. They're going to try the field goal now. Mike Salerno on the field goal attempt, 39 yards. Got the leg for it. And he puts it right down the boulevard. 56 seconds to go in this first half of play. And we are tied at 10 apiece. The Gophers got the lead off a of fumble recovery, off a of block punt. Northern Illinois gets the equalizing score. That'll be a shot of adrenaline for your team. In 1977, this is a super fans trivia question. Number 54 became the first Minnesota number to be officially removed from the football roster. Who wore this number? The Big Ten Network looking for its most passionate fans with Big Ten super fans. And uh, the Big Ten Network wants to reward its loyal viewers with chances to win great prizes like tickets to Big Ten games, autograph memorabilia, and much more. Register now, BigTenNetwork.com. That's where you can go to uh, register your guess on the first number to be retired here at Minnesota. 56 seconds remaining, first half. Deep into the end zone. Are they coming out of there with it? Yes, indeed. But not very far for Jay Thomas this time. And he's brought down short of the 20 in the 17-yard line. Tracy Wilson with a sure tackle. You see the intensity. Nice play by Wilson hustling down on special teams. But both sides playing with an edge. He's making plays. He recovered a block punt <laughs> earlier. He's feeling it, I'll tell you. And that's the type of thing that it's infectious. It spreads to the other guys. Interesting to see his teammates now, see if they feed on what he's done. Two timeouts left for Minnesota. Weber on first down. Quarterback draw. And maybe they've gone to that well once or twice too many. Mike Krause, the defensive tackle, made the stop. Kraus and Crutch inside, Rush and English on the outside for Northern Illinois. A defensive front, gain of three, to make it a gain of two. Here's a look at the freshman quarterback for Northern Illinois, Chandler Harnish, making his first start in his college career. Halftime show, don't forget the update on Beanie Wells. Scores and highlights from all the games today. Second down, Minnesota. Bennett, and it looks like they're just going to run the clock out here and head to intermission. Tied at 10 with the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Adam Weber led an early touchdown drive. The first drive of the season, 18 plays, 90 yards against the Northern Illinois defense. Minnesota had a 7-0 lead. Huskies came right back with a touchdown early in the second quarter. And two field goals to close out the first half. Let's get down to Ron with Tim Bruce to run. All right, thanks a lot, Wayne. Well, Coach, first of all, great drive to start the ball game. What happened to the momentum from that drive? Well, you know, we just we just didn't finish the first half the way we began it. You know, and uh, we we made it. You know, we got a turnover. We got some excitement there, uh, but the block punt was disappointing, without question. Where was the breakdown? Well, I, we'll have to talk about it. We'll, but we think it was off the right wing. We'll get it looked at at halftime. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. And again at halftime, the Huskies of Northern Illinois and the Minnesota Golden Gophers tied at 10. Stay tuned. Halftime studio coming up next with Dave, Jerry, and Howard. Hey, honey, two shampoos. Maybe they're just buying you off so you write a good review. It's working. It's 
working. Ah, oh, they got me. Ah, oh, it's working. A million guest reviews from people like you. Welcome to Hotels.com. Made from fresh tomatoes living happily together with spicy green chilies. The bold flavor of Rotel gives your queso a kick. Spice things up with Rotel. such thing as too much performance, especially when it comes to high-yielding Mycogen brand grain corn hybrids. When it's an insurance company, they call it Liberty Mutual. Responsibility. What's your policy? Liberty Mutual Insurance. So Alzheimer's has really affected my family. And I want to know, when's the cure? An Alzheimer's cure? A huge discovery might be that big. At the U of M, we've reversed memory loss in mice. If we can apply this research to people, we might cure Alzheimer's or stop it before it begins. Submit your greatest question at umn.edu. Welcome in the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Great to have you with us, 10-10 game between Minnesota and Northern Illinois. Dave Revson, Jerry DiNardo, and Howard Griffith want to take you through the rest of the league and some big stories early on on day one of the Big Ten football season. We will start you off with the Michigan Wolverines, the debut of Rich Rodriguez. They were down 25 to 10 to Utah in the fourth quarter, but the freshman Sam McGuffey goes in for the touchdown at made it 25 to 23. And then Steven three throw an incomplete back of the end zone on the two point conversion try. So still 25 23. Less than two minutes ago, they go for it on fourth down and three, overthrowing another freshman, Daryl Stoneham. Utah hangs on to win it by the final of 25 to 23. Impressive comeback by Michigan, certainly, guys. A good second half defensively, but got to be a little concerned about the offense, coach. Yeah, I think we, what we know now that we didn't know before the game was that Rich Rodriguez did want to go the direction of Clemson and be more balanced. That's why he gave Nick Sheridan all the opportunity in the world to do that. It didn't work so well. Steve Three came in, may have played better, and we may see a little bit of a change in philosophy next game. And I think the other side you have to look at is their inability to get the running game going, which would have helped both quarterbacks because that would have taken some of the pressure off the secondary. But they have to get their running game going if they hope to be successful this year. Now just 37 net rushing yards for the Michigan Wolverines, only 200 yards total offense in the game. It was not a good performance offensively for Michigan and again spoils the debut for Rich Rodriguez. Meanwhile for Ohio State they were taking on the Penguins of Youngstown State. Jim Trestle's former team third quarter this is not good. Beanie Wells goes down and goes down hard grabbing his right foot. Wells would be helped off the field unable to put any pressure on it would come back to the sideline though wearing a protective boot. Well said afterwards, he's going to see how it feels in a day or two. Terrell Pryor felt pretty good making his Ohio State debut and out of the pistol takes it into the end zone. The 18 yard touchdown run. The Buckeyes win it by the final of 43 to nothing. Obviously, they're pleased with the way that Pryor played. They're pleased with the win. But Howard, the loss of Beanie Wells again, 
An x-ray was negative, so that's good news. Don't know anything beyond that, except that Wells said he kind of felt something pop a couple plays before. He said he'd give it a try in a couple days, see how it felt. What does this mean for the Buckeyes? Well, I think for the Buckeyes, they have to take more of a wait-and-see approach to see just how severe this injury could be. But if it is, obviously, we're talking about one of the best backs in the country, so that's obviously going to affect what they're going to do offensively. But Mo Wells and Brandon Sane may have to step up next week and make some plays. Yeah, I think the reality of it is this. Tomorrow, Jim Tressel and the staff meets with the medical people. If the medical people say you will not have Beanie Wells ready for the trip to Los Angeles, then they start tweaking the offense. It might be more Terrell Pryor. It might be more spread attack. You don't lose a Heisman Trophy candidate and not tweak the offense because you've built part of the offense around him. If he's going to be back for the Southern Cal game, then I think they can do whatever they want against Ohio University and expect him back and, and stay with their original plan. But I still don't think it has to be that drastic because Todd Beckman is still an outstanding quarterback. So I don't know if they have to shift it as much as, as probably we would think. But having Pryor there is an excellent option, a change of pace that will allow that defense to really get loose because they won't know what to do when you have Pryor into the game. If they want to win the national championship, I think they have to they have to shift it dramatically. If they want to win the Big Ten, they probably don't. If they want to beat Ohio University, but to get back to where they want to go and you lose a Heisman Trophy, to me, something has to change significantly yeah but I just don't I just don't know if it's it's time to press the button yet I think we need to wait and see okay as it was Beanie 13 carries 111 yards the other running backs for Ohio State 15 carries for 69 yards combined again we'll see whether they're able to tweak things if they need to coming up with that game against the Bobcats and then of course go to USC in a couple weeks I think it's safe to assume they do want to win the national championship but without way. a doubt there's still plenty to come on our Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. We'll take you through the rest of the league, including the Cats and the Cues. That's coming up. I get out and I ride with my buddies every weekend, you know. We go out and get after it. Like today, we hit one section when everyone stopped, second-guessed it, and I just kept going. Rock here, rock there. I just got a handful, and there she went. True all-wheel drive, new active descent control, legendary ride and handling. Polaris, the world's toughest ATVs. Polaris Power Play sales event. Get to your participating dealer for up to $800 in rebates and as low as 3.99% APR on select ATVs. Herb Brooks spoke of miracles. Jane Pauley speaks with integrity. Jesse Owens spoke of equality. Steve McCurry speaks through humanity. Gerald Ford spoke of world peace. Find your voice. From Game Lounge Central, I'm Pat Sajak, here to tell you that Pat Sajak games can now be played right on your TV set with your remote control. It's as simple as going to Channel 110 and presto, over 60 games at your fingertips, as well as fun-filled games from your favorite brands, all for only $5.95 a month. That's right, $5.95 a month gets you an all-access pass for the entire family. And if you act now, I'll give you a pedicure. Direct TV's Game Lounge. Tune to Channel 110 to play now. Just kidding about the pedicure. The sport's biggest star, the undefeated contender. Only one will break through and get closer to the light heavyweight title as former champ Chuck the Iceman Liddell, coming off a thrilling victory over Vanderlei Silva, faces Sugar Rashad Evans, the ultimate fighter winner who's never lost and is determined to knock off the UFC legend. The Ultimate Fighting Championship presents UFC 88 Breakthrough, live Saturday, September 6th from Phillips Arena in Atlanta, Georgia, on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. Drama with the Big Ten's greatest games. Every week, take another look into the conference's rich football history. The incredible performances. The intense rivalries. The nail-biting finishes. And the unforgettable moments. The Big Ten's greatest games. Only on the Big Ten Network. Back on the Buffalo Wild Wings, halftime report. Coastal Carolina going to Penn State. 14-7, relatively close game early in the second quarter, but Derek Williams takes care of that in a hurry. 89 yards on the kickoff return. 
Penn State got 594 yards of total offense. They roll 66 to 10, most points they've scored since putting up 67 against Louisiana Tech in September of 2000. Other games, Wisconsin pounds Akron 38-17 behind 210 yards rushing from P.J. Hill. Tyrell Sutton, 144 rushing yards, 41 receiving in Northwestern's 20-point win over Syracuse. Indiana beats Western Kentucky 31-13. Kellen Lewis, nine carries for 185 yards, also threw for 144 yards, scored two touchdowns, threw for two, and Iowa all over Maine, 46-3. Good balance from the Hawkeyes, 245 rushing yards, 212 passing yards. All right, the game you're watching, it's 10-10 between Minnesota and Northern Illinois. What are the keys to the second half here for the Gophers, Howard? I think defensively they have to tackle better. They really struggled a little bit in that first half of wrapping up the ball carrier. They've got to get better at that because that's something we touched on that happened last year, not tackling well at all, Coach. Yeah, I would tell the defense to hang in there, though, because I think they're playing good enough to win. I would tell the offense we need some plays made, get the playmakers to make some plays, and I would tell the punt team if it happens again, you lose your scholarship. You have to protect <laughs> for the punter. You can't get a punt block first game of the year. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that happens. You always talk about that first game, particularly special teams, does not step up and play well sometimes because they haven't been live during practice. Well, Tim Brewster reacted a little bit better than you did, thankfully. At least, it, 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 At least the guys are still on, on camera. scholarship. Yeah, on camera, I react a little <laughs> bit better. 10-10, Minnesota and Northern Illinois. Can't we all just get along? That's a great question. And the answer might have to do with this. At the University of Minnesota, we're researching relational aggression in young girls. This experiment with one ice cream cone and three kids helps us understand why kids bully and what forms it takes. With this research, we hope to someday stop aggression before it begins. Students, please. So the search continues. Learn more at umn.edu. I just kind of ran over and was in disbelief, but then all of my uh, teammates came over and tackled me, and it was, it was pretty fun. They say there is no I in team. Yeah, try telling that to the Illini Nation on a Saturday afternoon. This is Big Ten country, and this is where it lives. Big Ten Football Saturday, next week, only on the Big Ten Network. It's the return of Pro Football Preview. We've raised the bar for all NFL pregame shows with the addition of Chargers All-Pro Sean Merriman as he joins Jay Glazer and Eddie George each week to give you the perspective only a current NFL player can give. Everybody has to get it done. You can't put it on one player. And take you inside week one's biggest stories. He's still the dominant player that he used to be. Pro Football Preview returns Friday. Camp off our day of football on the Big Ten Network. Northern Illinois, Minnesota tied at 10 apiece at halftime. Now it's time for your champion apparel tradition. All season long, champion apparel will be showcasing the tradition and history of the Big Ten. Today, we spotlight the University of Minnesota and the trophies they play for. Rivalry games are a way of life for the Gophers, and the trophies at stake in these games are some of the most unique in sports. Against Michigan, it's the Little Brown Jug. Paul Bunyan's Axe versus Wisconsin. The Governor's Victory Bell against Penn State. And last but not least, the Floyd of Rosedale for the game against Iowa. A jug, an axe, a bell, and a pig. All a part of Minnesota's football tradition. 
champion. It's how you play. A work of art. A finely tuned machine. A sanctuary. A command center. A sophisticated sedan. A sports car. Together. Introducing the all-new Nissan Maxima, the four-door sports car. Lease a new 2009 Nissan Maxima for $339 a month for 39 months. I will play with the spirit of Marion Barber. And the exuberance of Lawrence Maroney. I will be explosive, like Bronco Nagurski. Determined, like Tyrone Carter. And committed like Tony Dungeon. I will. I will. I will. All right, let the journey begin. This week on the series premiere of Illinois football, The Journey. Expectations are high in Champaign. People are expecting not just a bowl bid, they're expecting a big bowl bid. There's no reason why we shouldn't have the same opportunity as anyone else to, to win the conference. As the Illini prepare for a season as the hunted in the Big Ten. College football is a what have you done for me lately kind of world, so you got to get it done every day. Illinois football, The Journey, Tuesday at 9.30 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. A 21-point Minnesota lead. And there's a touchdown toss to Ross Lane. Touchdown Wildcats. This is it. Touchdown Wildcats. Peterman again. One play to win it or lose it. Fires incomplete and the Wildcats win and roll in double overtime. Unbelievable football game. Saturday. It's another exciting football doubleheader on the Big Ten Network. First, Travis Beckham looks to show why he's one of the nation's best when he leads the Badgers into a collision with a thundering herd. Then, under the lights in Bloomington, Marcus Thigpen powers the Hoosiers against Murray State. Coverage starts with the Big Ten Football Saturday pregame show. Next Saturday, only on the Big Ten Network. Teams coming off bad seasons from a year ago determined to get off on the right foot here tonight in Minneapolis. Well, I think this is exactly what you get when you have a team that was 1 and 11 last year and a team that was 2 and 10. Two guys that are just going to go out there, lay it all on the line. Offensively, they're playing efficiently, and defensively, they're getting stops. All right, let's take a look at the Micogen first half stats for tonight's game. Brought to you by high performance Micogen brand grain corn hybrids. And take a look at it just about even across the board and we expect a good second half hotly contested in the Metrodome for Jerry Kill and Northern Illinois. A lot goes through your mind after an accident. But with Liberty Mutual Insurance issues won't. Man. Because we offer unlimited rental coverage, new car replacement, and accident forgiveness to help ease your mind. And that's our policy. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Hey, honey, two shampoos. Maybe they're just buying you off so you write a good review. It's working. It's working. Ah, oh, they got me. Ah, oh, it's working. A million guest reviews from people like you. Welcome to Hotels.com. Auto Parts. They'll test the battery. If it's good, great. If it's dead, buy an autocraft and let them drop it in for you. No charge. Whatever you need, Advance will help you keep the wheels turning. Made from fresh tomatoes living happily together with spicy green chilies. The bold flavor of Rotel gives your queso a kick. Spice things up with Rotel.
Buffalo Wild Wings. You have to be here. Along with Ron Johnson and Chris Martin, Wayne Larravee with you from the Metronome in Minneapolis. And we've got a good one going here, Northern Illinois. Hey. And the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Joel Monroe sent to kick it off to start the third quarter. Macy O. Brown on the left side of your screen. And on the right side, that's Ricky Kreider. Brown, the freshman, from the six. Good hard tackle made just short of the 25-yard line by Nathan Triplett. First down coming up for the Huskies. Big Ten Network football is brought to you by Rotel because you can't start your game day without Rotel's famous queso by Hotels.com. Hotel reviews from people like you. Welcome to Hotels.com. And by High Performance Mycogen brand grain corn hybrids. Contact your Mycogen seeds dealer. Chandler Harness shot a first down. He was 7 of 9 passing for 73 yards. And Justin Anderson gets the call, not going very far there. Anderson, 37 yards, making 34 yards on 10 carries in the first half of play. Lee Campbell, very active as we expected in the middle of the Minnesota defense, made the tackle. Well, in that time, they moved Campbell closer to the line of scrimmage. And we said he's the vocal leader of that defense. He's a spark plug, exactly what you want when you want talk about a Mike linebacker. And that's the big thing for Brewster. He wants to set a temperament. He wants a fiery attack style defense. Second and nine for Harnish. That's Kreider next to him in the shotgun. Harnish. And Britt Davis <laughs> on his seat makes that catch just across the 25 near the 27 yard line. Short gain, third down coming up. Marcus Sherrills had the coverage for Minnesota. We'll see it here. All it is is that simple screenplay again, rollout situation, safe throw. But we had a chance to talk to the coaches about Chandler Harness, and they said the players really have responded to him. He has good presence in the huddle, and when you play well, other players notice it. Third down. Opening drive, third quarter, Northern Illinois. Harness on a keeper. Decked by the blitzing linebacker. Oh, I beg your pardon. That was Willie Vandesteen. He looped from his defensive end spot on the right side, came right up the middle like a blitzing linebacker. Watch this, Chris. Oh, and you'd love to see this for Vandesteen. Finally healthy this year. Talked to him yesterday. He said he wanted to get more sacks. He was primed and ready to go. We saw it there. That's just a hustle play. Great effort, way to finish. Well, I tell you, they looped him inside very effectively. Fourth down, loss of one. Andy Dick Benner on punt formation. And again, another high punt. They're going to let this one go, and it takes a Northern Illinois hop inside the 40. And the Gophers will get it near their 35-yard line. So Minnesota on offense for the first time in this, the third quarter. When we come back out a 10-all tie, 12.42 to go, third quarter. There's only one utility vehicle that can do it all. Only one that can outrun. Only one that can outpull. Only one that can outride. And only one that can outwork every utility vehicle out there. Only Ranger. Hardest working, smoothest riding. Get financing as low as 2.99% and up to $800 during a Power Play sales event. What would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song and I'll try not to sing out of key. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. Yeah, I'm gonna try with a little help from my friends. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends, a little help from my friends. At Hampton, we love having you here. 
Men's soccer takes center stage on the Big Ten Network. Be a part of the excitement as the conference's best kick into high gear on the road to a championship. Big Ten men's soccer, all season long on the Big Ten Network. Scalpel. Scalpel? I'm going to make the bilateral incision now. Oh, now, wait a sec. Doctor, what is it? Badgers must have scored. This is Big Ten country, and this is where it lives. Big Ten Football Saturday, next week, only on the Big Ten Network. Hi, I'm Jordan. I'm a journalist. Let me journal! Let me journal! Let me journal! And a professional. How else do you get into a press box if you're not professional? Somewhat of a television star. Somebody got recognized for being on TV. The man on campus. People are kissing people. How can you not love this? And I'm coming to every Big Ten campus this year. Look out. Big Ten Friday Night Tailgate presented by Nissan. Only on the Big Ten Network. Illinois football, the journey, Tuesday at 9.30 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. Big Ten Network football is brought to you by high-performance Mycogen brand grain corn hybrids. Contact your Mycogen seeds dealer. Twelve forty-two to go here in the third. Minnesota on offense for the first time in the second half. Weber running option. And they get yardage out across the 40-yard line to the 41. DeLeon Eskridge, the freshman, out of San Francisco, California, with his first carry. Well, we'll see it here. It's good spacing. But what, what we like is downhill flow. This is just going to be an action this way. But you're going to see the safety get in the alley to disrupt the play. Good job of coming down and being able to once again tackle in space. Second down for Weber and company. That's the tight end Jack Simmons in motion. Weber off play action to Decker. His first catch since the opening drive of the game and it's enough for the first down. Out near the 47 yard line under the coverage of Chase Carter. And Wayne this is the time and point in the game where you like to see some gadget type stuff thrown out. There haven't been any surprises yet but we talked to coach Brewster yesterday and he said oh you better believe there's going to be surprises on both sides. Look for out and up deep routes. Weber in the first half was 11 of 18 for 80 yards. Now first down. And again play action Weber going over the top wide open Simmons at the 30 to the 25 and he may go to the 10. year changed his number for his senior year to his dad's number 15 and he's making dad proud here getting this ball to the house but we talked about it's just a matter of time to Minnesota's gonna take its shots down the field excellent execution and way to find the end zone Joel Monroe for the point after You know, Mike Dunbar told us the kick is good, by the way. The offensive coordinator told us that, you know, Jack Simmons can stretch the defense a little bit. He didn't have four or five speed, but he's good enough to stretch that defense, and he did right there all the way to the end zone. And Minnesota in the third takes a seven-point lead. Tradition. Teamwork. Spirit. The pride of Minnesota. Gopher football coming back to campus. Join us for the ultimate homecoming. Purchase your season tickets now and secure your seats in the new TCF Bank Stadium. Looking to enhance your game day experience? Presenting the Rotel Ultimate Tailgate Package Sweepstakes. You could win an incredible grand prize package featuring a grill, 
barbecue set, delicious Rotel products, and everything else you'll need to support your team or other great weekly prizes. To enter, log on to Big10Network.com and fill out an entry form or send a postcard to the address on your screen. Don't miss out. Enter the Rotel Ultimate Tailgate Package Sweepstakes today. Next Saturday. It's another exciting football doubleheader on the Big Ten Network. First, Travis Beckham looks to show why he's one of the nation's best when he leads the Badgers into a collision with a thundering herd. Then, under the lights in Bloomington, Marcus Thigpen powers the Hoosiers against Murray State. Coverage starts with a Big Ten football Saturday pregame show. Next Saturday, only on the Big Ten Network. drama with the Big Ten's greatest games. Every week, take another look into the conference's rich football history. The incredible performances. The intense rivalries. The nail-biting finishes. And the unforgettable moments. The Big Ten's greatest games. Only on the Big Ten Network. Jack Simmons, 53-yard touchdown reception. His career-long reception, his second career touchdown, has put Tim Brewster's Gophers on top by seven with 11.25 to go here in the third. Monroe kicking it away. Miko Brown on the near side, the principal deep back. This one squibs across the 10. Brown makes a play on it. Nice move there to the 25 and out of bounds just short of the 30 yard line. We revisit the touchdown a moment ago. What do you see partner? Well, you get Jack Simmons and what he's going to do is just outflank the defense. He's going to come in motion I believe and just kind of get out in the open and outflank the defense and no one carries him. And that's exactly why he's wide open. And you knew it was a matter of time they're going to take a shot down the field. You know, we were talking about it during the commercial break. Was Larry English the guy who was assigned to take the tight end of that situation? Well, most of the time, Larry English plays with his hand on the ground, but that time he was dropping back into coverage and had a tough time locating the tight end. First down, Northern Illinois to the ground game. Justin Anderson. And Minnesota's fired up right now. Deion Hightower filled the hole. There's the three-play, 64-yard drive, 53 of it, on that one pass to Simmons. No gain, second down and 10 for Northern Illinois. This is where Harnish is the leader of this team, has to step up, rally his guys, and say, stick to the game plan. We're confident in what we're doing. We know we can have success against this defense. Britt Davis on the bottom of your screen, a go-to receiver for Harnish. Harnish going the other way. As a man open, diving attempt made, and they're calling it a reception on the far side, a diving grab. Beautiful catch by Matt Simon, the senior out of Farmington, Minnesota. First down across the 40-yard line of the 43, gain of 15 yards. Well, it was a great catch and great body position. I mean, watch this, because he's covered. But he extends his body to go get it, and exactly where you want to put the ball if you're Chandler Harnish, out and away so the defender can't make a play on it. Good job by Matt Simon. Tremaine Brock, the safety cover on that play, but he has 4-3-7 speed in the 40 at safety. Aren't many safeties that can run the way he does. Harnish has another open receiver, and it's a fullback. Kyle Scarb, and he's got yardage inside Minnesota territory to the 48-yard line, very close to that first down. Let's revisit tonight's Suzuki ATV's keys to the game. Well, he talked about Northern Illinois had to establish the run. They've been doing that effectively with Justin Anderson, and we talked about keeping Minnesota behind the chains. They've tried to do that other than giving up the big play to Simmons. And then Minnesota offensive efficiency, not throwing interceptions. Weber hasn't done that yet. He's been decisive with the football. Second down and short off a gain of nine of the previous play. Chandler Harnish at the controls. Oh, and here's a little scoop by 
Montel Clanton right up the middle. Boy, they pound away with Justin Anderson, and then they change the pace with Montel Clanton for a first down with the Minnesota 33. Wayne, and it doesn't matter what defense you put in if you don't tackle. I mean, this is just poor tackling. You're getting an arm tackle there, trying to reach out. Any running back, quality running back, is going to go through that. One of the points of emphasis for Minnesota yep. was you got to be able to get bodies on the ground. Minnesota struggled with tackling last year defensively, no doubt about that. First down off a gain of 15. And this time, <laughs> nothing there for Montel Clanton. Senior out of Rockford, Illinois, overcame a couple of serious knee injuries in his career in Northern Illinois. Garrett Brown brings him down. Again, keeping harness in rhythm with a mixture of plays inside, outside runs, simple rollout passes. Keeping that defensive front of Minnesota moving. That's a big D line. Good job of keeping those guys off balance. Here's a look at Garrett Brown, number 99. It is a second down and nine. Harnish under some pressure, able to let it go and threw it away. Good play on his part. He was getting some heat that time. Gophers had some people coming free, including Steve Davis and Willie Vandesteeg, along with Lee Campbell. You're going to see pressure, but what I love is a guy that plays with good football IQ. He feels the pressure. Harnish, avoiding the sack, gets rid of it. And that's what you want. Throw the ball in the stands if you have to. Don't take sacks. Talk about efficiency, 10 of 13. Again, this is a redshirt freshman, very comfortable in the system. Northern Illinois in that first half, three of six on third down conversions. Third and nine at the Gopher 32. Harnish, Davis, oh, what a catch, and it's broken up incomplete. Great play made by Marcus Sherrills. He finished the play. It appeared Davis had him beaten on the leap, but Sherrills did not quit on the play and broke it up at the five-yard line. Fourth down, Northern Illinois. Well, you said the key words. He finished, and he closed to the ball. That time, one-on-one -on -one coverage. He doesn't give up. He keeps fighting. He's playing the receiver, and he goes up to high point the ball and get it out of there. Marcus Sherrill's first game as a cornerback. He was a walk-on wide receiver in this program. You might recall his brother, Chris Mike Sherrill, was a two-time golfer captain in the linebacking court. He was a good one. Minnesota, Minnesota calls for a timeout. It appears Northern Illinois will attempt the field goal. So Tim Brewster takes his first time out of the second half. A little over eight and a half minutes to go. Minnesota on top in the third by seven. Hey, honey, two shampoos. Maybe they're just buying you off so you write a good review. It's working. It's working. Ah, oh, they got me. Ah, oh, it's working. A million guest reviews from people like you. Welcome to Hotels.com. tomatoes living happily together with spicy green chilies. The bold flavor of Rotel gives your queso a kick. Spice things up with Rotel. Field goal attempt of 49 yards for Mike Salerno. And it is good. Salerno, the transfer out of Winona State, showing some good leg here tonight. It's another field goal. And Northern Illinois creeps back to within four. He's got a lot of pop in his leg. He choked that one right down the middle. 
Coach Kills gotta love that. His guys fighting and playing and buying into his philosophy and his visions for the program in Northern Illinois. Yep, they've taken some shots here this ball game tonight, but they're hanging right in. And we've got a four-point game, still 8.27 to go here in the third. And I like what he said when we talked to him about his team. He said, really, you don't really know what you have until you get out there and play. you got to throw the kids out there to find out exactly what they're made of. Again, they had a rash of injuries, so they didn't get a close look at their guys in the spring. But he's finding out exactly what his team's made of and how these individuals are going to respond. So Salerno getting set to kick it away. Twin safeties back deep for the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Jay Thomas has returned a couple here tonight. Salerno. And here come the Gophers. Troy Stoudemire out across the 35, close to the 40-yard line. Stoudemire, one of the Ballyhoo recruits for Tim Brewster, a freshman out of Dallas, Texas, Skyline High School. He's got some jets, doesn't he? Well, he's a quick twitch player. I mean, he finds the edge. And in this game, we've seen lane integrity get violated. Guys jumping out of lanes, creating creases. Stoudemire doing a good job of finding it. Ron Johnson, what do you have for us? Well, Wayne, it was like Chris Martin was a fly on the wall at halftime when I talked to Jerry Kill. He said, hey, look, we've got a redshirt freshman quarterback out there. We're a new coaching staff. We're just getting to know our guys. They're getting to know us. So we're happy to be where we are, and we feel we're very fortunate. But at the same time, they expected to be right here. Dewan Bennett off to the races, to the 20, to the 15, 10, 5, touchdown! 61-yard gallop! his thought that they weren't expecting that home run ball because when you come in and you play a team like Minnesota you cannot give up explosive plays and it looked like Dewan Bennett was shot out of a cannon and once he hit that lane it was curtains Monroe's point after Well, we've seen Minnesota on one of the longest drives they'll be on all season to start the game, and we've seen one of the quickest. One play, 61 yards. The extra point is good. Career-long touchdown run for Dewan Bennett, and Minnesota takes a 24-13 lead. And I think, again, this is just an inside trap play. He gets excellent blocking out front. He has the vision to find the hole. Look at the wide receivers blocking down the field. Exactly what you teach. He didn't make many big runs last year, but he certainly got out the gates there. And again, I think you're right, Chris. When you see a 61-yard run, wide receivers make blocks. Decker slowed up that linebacker. And then another block made by, I believe, Ralph Spry right there. Decker comes back as another block. Now, you have to understand something, folks. When Eric Decker and Ralph Spry came here, they were recruited by a staff, the Glenn Mason staff, that likes to run the football. So job one for a wide receiver <laughs> in a running attack like Minnesota used to have here with Lawrence Peroni and company is blocked downfield. <laughs> and they, they learned that very very well. <laughs> Been there, done that. And, and that's exactly what they said. They said they love this offense because they see the ball a lot more, but they didn't forget the feistiness of which they were taught. That's, that's get out and be aggressive on defensive backs. Monroe restarts the game. Minnesota with an 11-point advantage. Biggest margin for either team. Miko Brown from the 5 to the 10. To the 15, penalty marker down. He's across the 25-yard line. Penalty marker down. DeLeon Eskridge brought him down. Let's see what Mike Cannon has here. Illegal block in the back. Down. 
So this next drive for Northern Illinois will start deep in their own territory. I would say the challenge just got a little tougher for Chandler Harnish. Oh, that's clearly a block in the back. And, that, and that's where you got to play disciplined football. They say if you can see the name on the back of the jersey, throw your hands up and don't attempt to make the block. You got to have football awareness when you're out on the field. Big plays by Minnesota. 53-yard touchdown reception by the tight end, Jack Simmons. 61-yard touchdown run by the running back, Dewan Bennett. Here in this second half, and Minnesota now on top by 11. And they've got the Huskies pinned back to the Northern Illinois nine-yard line. Miko Brown, the setback next to Harnish. They give to Brown. And not much there. Mid portion of that Minnesota defense all over it. Davis closed in, but also in on that tackle was uh, Jawan Edwards. And Edwards is a guy they are really excited about, number 68. Not a huge fan of the last call. I mean, running Miko Brown, who's about a buck 75, soaking wet in between the tackles. <laughs> Minnesota's been playing stout defense. Well, you know, he's he's probably soaking wet. He's been returning kicks here, so <laughs> he's got that going for him, I guess. No gain, second down and 10. Eddie Adamski on the snap. Harnish the ball tipped incomplete. Oh, good play made by the linebacker Steve Davis, one of the co-captains of the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Pass intended for Britt Davis. Oh, and this is just a veteran play by Steve Davis, the captain. Watch him just watch the eyes. Look at that slide. Watch the eyes of the quarterback. It's going to take you to the football. Well done. That's a guy that's played a lot of football. Just reading and reacting. Quarterback's going to take you to the ball. So it becomes third down and 10 for Northern Illinois at the Husky nine yard line. This half, Minnesota's been on fire with a couple of big plays. And a timeout called by Northern Illinois. That's a good timeout, partner. Harnish was running out of time on the play clock. Yeah, and, and, and beyond that, I mean, this crowd was starting to get heated up. Well, they're lathered in the Metrodome. Northern Illinois facing third down. When we come back, they now trail 24-13 at Minnesota. A work of art, a finely tuned machine, a sanctuary, a command center, a sophisticated sedan, a sports car. Together. Introducing the all-new Nissan Maxima, the four-door sports car. Lease a new 2009 Nissan Maxima for $339 a month for 39 months. I get out and I ride with my buddies every weekend, you know. We go out and get after it. Like today, we hit one section when everyone stopped, second-guessed it, and I just kept going. Rock here, rock there. I just got a handful, and there she went. True all-wheel drive. New active descent control, legendary ride and handling. Polaris, the world's toughest ATVs. Polaris Power Play sales event. Get to your participating dealer for up to $800 in rebates and as low as 3.99% APR on select ATVs. Wayne Larrabee, Chris Martin, Ron Johnson back at Minnesota. The Metrodome's come alive. Third down and long, third and 10. For Northern Illinois, football to the nine-yard line of the Huskies. Harnish. Nice throw, great catch. Off to the races, and look at this, Nathan Palmer, the fastest of the Huskies, all the way for the touchdown. <laughs> 91 yards, and the big plays keep on coming in this third quarter. And these guys, they're waiting to find out who's going to make the next big play. These guys are playing with confidence. Nathan Palmer says, look, take a look in the rearview mirror here. <laughs> I'm out. The coaches told us this week when we talked with the offensive coordinator, Matt Limegrover, he said Nathan Palmer, when he gets his hands on the ball, is electric. Well, and if you're going to live and die by that one-on-one -on -one coverage, that's what you get. Isolated. Got to make a tackle in space. Poor job. At that point, live to line up again. Make the tackle. Give up a 15-yarder, not a 91-yarder. 
You talk about stemming momentum on the road, partner. Wow. It is 24 to 19. And the extra point try coming from Mike Salerno. These are two programs that combined all of last year had three wins between them. They are desperate to get off to a good start this year. Both sides. High snap, the placement by Dick Benner, the putter, and the kick is good. Well, it's a four-point game once again. Just under seven minutes to go. Third quarter, don't go away. The big plays just keep on coming. I want to know what's being done for people who have trouble hearing. I already put the cat out. Great question. This little frog might actually hold the answers. At the U of M, my students and I are researching how female frogs can choose a specific male in a pond of hundreds. It's like a crowded restaurant, where it's very hard for people with hearing impairments to hear. We believe our research will help build better hearing aids for people. So the search continues. Learn more at umn.edu. Next Saturday. It's another exciting football doubleheader on the Big Ten Network. First, Travis Beckham looks to show why he's one of the nation's best when he leads the Badgers into a collision with a thundering herd. Then, under the lights in Bloomington, Marcus Thigpen powers the Hoosiers against Murray State. Coverage starts with the Big Ten Football Saturday pregame show. Next Saturday, only on the Big Ten Network. Ron Johnson and Chris Martin, Wayne Larravee back in Minneapolis, Northern Illinois on the board in a big way. We saw Nathan Palmer display a gear of speed we haven't seen from anyone else tonight. We've seen some big plays in this game tonight. Clearly. Richard, freshman out of Elkhart, Indiana. Twin safeties back deep again for Minnesota. And the kickoff by Salerno. And once again, oh, look at this gear. Troy Stoudemire still on his feet out to the 44-yard line. Minnesota's finding a punt returner here in that freshman out of Dallas, Texas. But there's the man of the moment right now. Three plays, 91 yards. Now, that was a third and 10 play. Take a look at it, Chris. Well, we talk about one-on-one -on -one coverage. If you're going to live and die by it, you, got, you can't leave your guys on islands. But watch this on the right side of the screen right there. All he's got to do is make the tackle, secure the tackle. And then it's a 15-yarder as opposed to a 91-yarder. Live to line up again. You cannot give up that explosive touchdown. So Minnesota back to the attack on first down. And not much there. <laughs> now it's the Huskies defense that is fired up. And Larry English right in the middle of it. And they should be. They, they feed on each other. You get a big play like that. And then the next guy wants to make a big play. We talked about Larry English being a hybrid. And that's exactly what you want your defensive end to look like. I mean, he's a big athletic guy with a lot of range. And he's just a disruptive force up front. Decker's at the bottom of your screen, three to the top. On second down, off a loss of three. Good decision, nice throw into the middle of the defense. And the tight end, Nick Tournet, makes the uh, reception. Corey Hansen in on that tackle, along with Kyrie Daniels. Well, and you're right about the decision-making by Weber, and it's also testing his patience, because he's got to let some of these routes develop. Yep. Don't try and get it all back in one play. Just take what the defense has given you. Three brothers on this team, the Tower Nets. Jeff, the starting center. Nick, back up tight end. And Nathan, a defensive back. Nathan's the oldest of the three. Pass may have been tipped. Comes up woefully short. You know Weber's got the arm to make that throw. I'm not sure if somebody got a piece of it. English maybe from behind hit the quarterback and let's see if we can pick it up. Well, you had a collapsing pocket, and when big plays start in the backfield and pressure, it's usually that guy, Larry English, who's making it happen. One-on-one -on -one block, bends the corner. Got to get rid of the football in a hurry. I'm not sure if anybody hit him. I think that ball just slipped out of his hand. I didn't see any contact when that ball came out. 
Justin Kusick on in punt formation. In over end a kick. And that's a planned kick, and that's going to hit and squib out of bounds inside the 10. Well done. Justin Kusick will put the Huskies back to their eight yard line as Chandler Hardish comes out. This game is brought to you in part by Nissan. And Nissan is the official vehicle of the Big Ten Conference. Wayne Larrabee, Chris Martin, Ron Johnson at the Metrodome. We've seen a good one here tonight. Northern Illinois down by four, starts another drive inside their 10-yard line. 5.21 to go in the third. Chandler Harnish has been impressive. Red shirt freshman quarterback. Off play action. Good throw. And making that catch is Reed Cunningham, the tight end. First down out across the 25 to the 26. Marcus Sherrill's on the tackle. And Wayne, there's been great play call on both sides. I mean, for Minnesota offensively with Mike Dunbar. And then, of course, for Northern Illinois, Matt Limegrover. Just getting, make, making smart plays for the quarterback. Putting him in winnable situations. You know you have a young guy in Harnish. You look at it here. Look at these numbers. 207. That's your freshman. 91. <laughs> yards makes a difference yeah. <laughs> a bit robust but certainly looks comfortable 18 yards on the completion of the tight end they take it to the ground of the freshman Miko Brown fighting his way showing a little toughness there pile drives out close to the 30 yard line gain of three almost four yards mid portion of the gopher defense was there well so often and we're not even to the fourth quarter but I, I'm sure folks are thinking around here in Minnesota you know so often the Gophers were in a position to win a football game last year just couldn't quite finish and uh, you know everybody tied up with the program has talked about it Tim Brewster mentioned it that's been a central theme there's Phil Roof the the new defensive coordinator finish the game Ted Roof I believe I beg your pardon I think I said Phil I meant to say Ted Roof Harnish over the middle. Simon in traffic brought down by the linebacker Davis. One of the tests for a young quarterback is his ability to read and di diagnose defenses. And so far, Harnish has answered all those question marks. Watch how he stands tall in the pocket, scans the field. He knows where the receiver's supposed to be, and he just lets the play develop. I mean, he, he's light years away from where you would think a quarterback would be at that point in his career. Eight-yard gain to a first down, 37-yard line. Husky territory. They trail by four in the final four minutes of this third quarter. Straight eye formation. Brown. Slithers through a crease up the middle out across the 45 to the 46 on a gain of nine yards. Well, it's kind of funny because when you talk to coaches, you get in a room and you ask them about certain players, and sometimes they just light up. And I'll tell you, when we asked them about number eight, Miko Brown, they lit up because they just thought that he's a guy that can make plays. He knows how to make people miss. A little undersized, but he's explosive. So they like to work him inside and outside and let him tote the rock. On second down and one, Brown again. <laughs> this time they find him. <laughs> you know, the thing that coaches mentioned to us with Miko, he's 5'7", 185. What he can do is get lost behind the block. Sure. And that's what he did on the previous play, but not that time. Steve Davis and <laughs> Derek Onwachi found him and bring him down for a loss of one. It is third and two. Oh, yeah, when you have guys across the board up front that are 6'5", 6'6", respectively, and you bring in a 5'8", guy, sometimes you get lost in all the trash on the field. <laughs> it's part of the scheme. 27th and final season for Minnesota football here at the Metrodome. Good crowd on hand for this opening night game. Third and two. Harnish. Pressured. Set. Barrett Mullen. Big play right there. inside the 35 yard line first career sack for Barrett Mullen and it's fourth down Northern Illinois well you know you like to see this if you're a Minnesota fan because they didn't get many sacks last year but good pressure right up the gut by Mullen 
What a huge stop for the Minnesota defense. Now giving the ball back to their O. Loss of 12 on that play on fourth down. And he did Benner on in punt formation again. Gets great leverage into this spiral. The fair catch signal is made and the catch completed on one knee by Marcus Sherrills. So it'll be first and 10 for Minnesota. Football, 26-yard line, go for territory. They have a four-point lead in the final 90 seconds of this third quarter. Forget to stick around after the game. Big Ten football Saturday postgame show. It's your source for highlights and analysis of all of today's Big Ten action. That's coming up following our ball game tonight. First and ten. Weber. Decker. First down. Out near the 40-yard line. Gain of about 14 yards. Josh Allen, a linebacker, had isolation on him, and he forced him out. And, you know, and we had a chance to talk to offensive coordinator Mike Dunbar, and he said one of the things that he first told Adam Weber is, do you see what I say? Yes. And what he <laughs> meant by that is that he can't be on the field and draw up the plays. But as he's talking, can you see it develop on the field? Mike Dunbar, certainly one of the beautiful minds in college football, particularly in the spread offense. First down, football to the 39 of Minnesota. Weber. Under pressure. Penalty marker down is going to be for a hold against Minnesota. And that pressure applied immediately by Brandon Bice. And he's going to be the first defensive end substituted in. And he was earlier tonight. He was a starter last year defensive end. And he makes the sack holding the call against uh, Minnesota. And I want to say it was holding on Bice, who still was able to shake loose and make the play. Now watch him come off the edge. That's just a, a major play. Watch him bull rush. I mean, you talk about a monster of a man. Number 60. Penalties declined. Second down. Well, he ran over Dom Alford, the left tackle, a star in the making here in Minnesota, the sophomore out of Cleveland, Ohio. But it was Ryan Wynn, the redshirt freshman right tackle, who was guilty of the hole. Now it is second down. And the thing about pass rush pressure, Chris, is a good rush comes from more than one spot. You have to get pressure from both sides. Oh, exactly right. Second and long. They set up the screen. And this is Bennett. Out across the 45. And that makes for a much more manageable third down coming up. Corey Hansen, the linebacker, brought him down. Well, and we covered Minnesota last year. And I don't remember Jawan Bennett having this type of burst. When he gets the ball in his hands, he's quick as a hiccup. So you better converge on him quickly. They like to mix it up, get him out in space with a lot of screens. He's quick. 18-yard gain on that screen play. We'll leave a third and three coming up when we head to the fourth quarter. It has been a good one in Minneapolis. The season opener for the Golden Gophers. And at the moment, they've got the lead 24-20 over the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Hey, honey, two shampoos. Maybe they're just buying you off so you write a good review. It's working. It's working. Ah, oh, they got me. Ah, oh, it's working. A million guest reviews from people like you. Welcome to Hotels.com. living happily together with spicy green chilies. The bold flavor of Rotel gives your queso a kick. Spice things up with Rotel. Hey, you'd look good green and white. We really think you're terrific. Come help us defend the rock. Well, I'm back at you. Big W on the helmet. You know about our Buckeye leaves, right? We got this new stadium coming. You'd look great in black and gold. We're the cradle quarterbacks. Do you like roses? Look, our helmet's got wings. Come to Ohio State. Come to Wisconsin. Indiana. Iowa. Purdue. Illinois. Michigan. Northwestern. Minnesota. Michigan State. Come to Penn State. 
moving day is here, the most dreaded of days. Packing, unpacking, your mind in a haze. DirecTV knows how stressful moving can be, so we make keeping your entertainment both easy and free. For uninterrupted service of the shows you like best, just leave the dish behind and we'll handle the rest. Simply dial 877-616-MOVE and we'll throw in three months of stars and showtime for free. Now on pay-per-view, Ben Campbell has the most gifted mind at MIT. You ever studied blackjack? But to pay for school... Are you talking about counting cards? You'll have to learn how to count. Plus nine. Plus five. Dude, I lost count 20 cards ago. Don't call me dude. Inspired by a true story... Welcome to Vegas. One student... 21! ...will change the game forever. Think you can beat the system? You play big or you don't play at all. 21. Now on pay-per-view. I just kind of ran over and was in disbelief, but then all of my uh, teammates came over and tackled me, and it was, it was pretty fun. This is the Big Ten Network. Will an explosive third quarter give way to a dramatic fourth quarter? Well, in that third quarter, we saw a 53-yard touchdown pass, 61-yard run, and a 91-yard touchdown pass. Minnesota's we start the fourth with a four-point lead and a third down and three. Weber, and it's incomplete. Decker had it for a moment, broken up nicely by Melvin Rice. Through three quarters, there's a look at the numbers. And everything pretty much, you know, the rushing yards heavily in favor of Minnesota with the big touchdown run of 61 yards. And the 91-yard touchdown pass has skewed the passing numbers just a bit, but in final analysis, it's a four-point game. All right, it's all said and done. When all the precincts are in, Chris, it's close. <laughs> and again, I think speaking to the toughness and resiliency on both sides of the football, it's been a good game. These are two improved football teams. No question about that. Miko Brown lets it go and it caroms at the five. And that was a pretty good heads up play by Brown. He made it look like he was going to make a fair catch play on that and then just let it go. But I think the uh, gopher coverage relaxed just a bit and it hit on the five and caroms straight into the end zone. Take a look at the scoring. This is that third quarter. And that's Jack Simmons, 53 yards, his second career touchdown reception and the longest of his career. And Dwan Bennett. I didn't think he had this kind of a gear. My goodness. Runs through contact. How about this? 91 yards. Nathan Palmer. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Secretariat at the Belmont. <laughs> First down at the 20-yard line. Quarterback run. Harnish trying to shake loose but cannot. These two teams have seen just about everything a spread offense can throw at them. Lee Campbell made the stop there. Hey, join host Mike Hall as he and his crew take you around the conference each week with a fun, unique look at every campus. Join him next week in Champaign on Big Ten Friday Night Tailgate, 8.30 p.m. Eastern only on the Big Ten Network. Illinois has got a big game tonight at St. Louis against Missouri, the sixth-ranked team in the nation. Illinois, the story of the Big Ten last year. One of the stories, I should say, Ohio State being the other. Illinois went to the Rose Bowl. Ohio State went to the national championship. Second down and about eight. Anderson, nowhere to go. They had him pretty much encased. Deion Hightower made the tackle. Wayne, I think one of the things we're seeing with Minnesota's defense, unlike last year, is they're playing fast. And we talked to Coach Roof about it, and there's a phrase, paralysis by analysis. And that's when football players on the field are thinking so much that they can't react and play fast. It was important to that man right there to uncomplicate things, as Coach Brewster would say, let guys get out there, understand what they're doing, and just go play football. It is third down for Northern Illinois. Harnish.
Parrish going deep. Incomplete. Brett Davis, the intended receiver. Marcus Sherrill's out there in coverage with safety help from Kyle Ferret. That was good coverage by Sherrill's. If you're going to take a shot, you're going to do it on the guy that was a wide receiver last year, and that was Marcus Sherrill's, but he was going stride for stride with the receiver. And that's a catchable ball there. That, that was certainly a catchable ball. That was a nice throw, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Outside. Sherrill's back in single safety to receive this punt from Andy Dittbenner. Another good looking punt. Fair catch signal made. And Minnesota will start their next drive at the 32 yard line in Gopher territory. Little more than two minutes into this fourth quarter of play. Minnesota and Northern Illinois in a good one. Gophers by four. What would you do if I sang out a tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song and I'll try not to sing your key. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. Yeah, I'm gonna try with a little help from my friends. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. A little help from my friends. At Hampton, we love having you here. I ride with my buddies every weekend, you know. We go out and get after it. Like today, we hit one section when everyone stopped, second guessed it. And I just kept going. Rock here, rock there. I just got a handful, and there she went. True all wheel drive, new active descent control, legendary ride and handling. Polaris, the world's toughest ATVs. Polaris Power Play Sales Event. Get to your participating dealer for up to $800 in rebates and as low as 3.99% APR on select ATVs. All right, let the journey begin. This week on the series premiere of Illinois football, The Journey. Expectations are high in Champaign. People are expecting not just a bowl bid, they're expecting a big bowl bid. There's no reason why we shouldn't have the same opportunity as anyone else to, to win the conference. As the Illini prepare for a season as the hunted in the Big Ten. College football is a what have you done for me lately kind of world, so you got to get it done every day. Illinois football, The Journey, Tuesday at 9.30 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. Welcome back to the Metrodome, Northern Illinois and Minnesota embroiled in a good one here tonight. It is a first down for the Golden Gophers. They have a four point lead opening two minutes fourth quarter. Dewan Bennett cut down on the hole. Oh, what a play made there by Zach Larson filling in for the linebacking core. Loss of one second and 11. Good job of shooting the gap that time by McCarthy in the hole like a heat seeking missile you, way to close. Absolutely. You're right. I had the wrong number. It was McCarthy 53 not Larson 57. McCarthy did a great you'd see how much they missed him last year. He played just two games last season. Better than 100 tackles in each of his first two full seasons with Northern Illinois. Second and 11 Minnesota. Not sure if one zigged and the other zagged, but Weber's pass went to the sideline. Decker, the intended receiver, was looking inside. I'm not sure if it was a zig or a zag, but it was almost pick six. You know, we talked about this. Minnesota's emphasis was finish everything, finish games especially. Here are games that close losses, games that could have gone either way down the stretch that went against the Gophers. Six losses by seven points or less for Minnesota in their 1-11 season a year ago. Third down. Third and 11 for Weber. Oh, he throws a strike right down the middle for a first down and a whole lot more to Decker. Inside the Northern Illinois 45 to the 41 yard line. David Bryant, the man they beat on the play. 
Well, first off, you're going to see he's going to get pressure over here on this side with Larry English coming off the edge. But watch him stand tall in the pocket, calmly knowing he's going to take a hit. But he lets the route develop by Eric Decker, very composed, under fire. First down of the 41-yard line. Decker now 128 yards catch, or make that 28 yards for Decker on that reception. Under pressure now, and this time Larry English gets his man, decking Adam Weber back near the 50-yard line, and that's a loss of nine yards. Well, we said Larry English is a sack waiting to happen. Last play, he got close. He came back. He said, all right, well, this time I'm going to finish the deal. And he keeps fighting and hustling. Great effort play. I'm telling you, this kid's one of the top pure rushers off the edge that you'll see in college football. Second down and long. Larry English, who had 10 and a half sacks last year. Second down for Minnesota, about 19 yards to go. On the quarterback draw, Weber, spin move, gets what he can. Pick up of about five down to the 45. Now it's third and almost 14 yards to go. Allen and Sobel team up on the stop for Northern. Watch this little spin move here, this pirouette, if you will. Talk about dancing <laughs> with the stars. Well, he's a candidate for it. He's, got <laughs> he's auditioning. Might get consideration in the uh, Twin Cities area. Almost five minutes gone by here in the fourth. Back and forth all night, these two teams. They cluster three receivers, bottom of your screen. Bennett out for a pass as well. Weber, plenty of time, incomplete. He was trying to get it to Decker, and Decker had uh, plenty of white jerseys around him inside the 30-yard line of Northern Illinois, and it's fourth down for Minnesota. We talked about Weber. Now, keep in mind, last year he threw 19 interceptions to go alongside 24 touchdowns. And I asked him about that, and he said most times when he threw picks, it was because he forced the football. He's starting to get a little edgy and pulling the trigger a little quickly. Justin Kusick on a punt formation. Let's see if he kicks one of those end-over-end -end kicks. Yep, that's what he did. Held the nose of the football straight down as he kicks it. And this one does carry him into the end zone. It hit on the 10, and what we, he was hoping for was some uh, spin to the sideline, but it stayed straight and true into the end zone, and Northern Illinois offensively takes over at the Husky 20 when we come back to Minneapolis. Hey, honey, two shampoos. Maybe they're just buying you off so you write a good review. It's working. <laughs> it's working. Ah, oh, they got me. Ah, oh, it's working. A million guest reviews from people like you. Welcome to Hotels.com. What happens when designers imagine a refined sedan? While engineers craft a powerful sports car? What happens? You get something better than both. Introducing the all-new Nissan Maxima, the four-door sports car. Lease a new 2009 Nissan Maxima for $339 a month for 39 months. Made from fresh tomatoes living happily together with spicy green chilies. The bold flavor of Rotel gives your queso a kick. Spice things up with Rotel. Next Saturday on the Big Ten Network, Travis Beckham looks to show why he's one of the nation's best when he leads the Badgers into a collision with a thundering herd. Next Saturday at High Def, only on the Big Ten Network. Beat the heat with the summer of channel surfing for hot Hollywood hits on DirecTV pay-per-view. What I'd like to know is how you rob a bank without opening any doors. Who are you? You think you could go on like this forever, living like this with no consequences? Ah! Make, make, make history. The President of the United States has been shot. There's something else going on here. Surf to channels 125 to 199 for the hottest summer flicks. Colts, Packers, Cowboys, all playing Sunday. And you don't have the entire day to devote to quality gridiron time. If you had DirecTV, you could watch an entire game in 30 minutes. NFL Sunday Ticket Superfan, only on DirecTV. 
You're watching Eli fillet the fish, but you're missing Peyton fumble the Panthers. If you had DirecTV, you could see up to eight NFL games live on the same screen, so you'll never miss a thing. NFL Sunday Ticket Superfan, only on DirecTV. Illinois football, the journey, Tuesday at 9.30 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. Big sack by Larry English on second down, backed up the Gophers, thwarted their drive near midfield, and now Northern Illinois a chance, trailing by four. A little over ten minutes to go, fourth quarter, first and ten. Harnish looks off one way, and covered up. Loss of four, back to the 16, Lee Campbell got there. Justin Kusick, unusual punting style in the drop of the ball when he's trying to hit the corner of the coffin. Watch this, holds the football, the nose of the ball right down, like that. And this gives it an end-over-end -end trajectory. And once it hits on the ground, generally it'll kick one way or the other. He was hoping it would kick a foot or two to the left, and that would have been out of bounds of the one-yard line, but it did catch the end zone. So Northern started this drive at the 20, and now they have second and 14 back at the 16-yard line. Pressure, quarterback flushed, going to keep it himself, able to escape out of bounds across the 20 at the 21-yard line, a run of five yards. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Big Ten Conference and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference. Wayne Larrabee, Chris Martin, Ron Johnson, opening night for Minnesota here at the Metrodome, and it's been a good one. Third and nine for Northern Illinois. Football to their 21. Harnish. And he's got his man, Nathan Palmer, for a first down out across the 45-yard line. Trey Simmons made the tackle. When you sit in a zone defense, you are susceptible to balls thrown over the middle of the field. And this is a good job of just finding the window in the soft spot in the defense. The linebackers don't drop back far enough to underneath, undercut that route. Excellent play call by Palmer. And look at him. Two catches, 118. Yeah, 27 on that pickup on third down. And the Huskies have something going here near the midfield marker. First and 10 at their 48. Harnish sets up the screen, knocked down, incomplete. Eric Small, the defensive tackle. Good reaction on his part to knock the ball down. Yeah, good reaction, good read, and smart enough to have the wherewithal to get his hands up. If you're not going to get all the way to the quarterback, you're taught to throw your hands up. You know, he came to school about 275 pounds a few years ago, and he's worked his body up to about 307. And he's got some good quickness about him. Meanwhile, Garrett Brown, the other starting tackle, kind of toned his body down to 303. It was a little bit of a soft 310, 315 last year. A little give and take. Yeah. <laughs> Second and 10. Harnish, tight pocket. And the pass off the mark. Harnish looked like he was bumped on that play. Pass off the mark down the sidelines as he was uh, trying to get it to Landon Cox. Now yeah, somebody cut him. So it is a third and ten for Northern Illinois. It's a critical play here. Minnesota's defense needs to get off the field. They're imploring their crowd to pick it up. Northern Illinois, 5 of 10 on third down conversions. Third and 10 here at the Husky 48-yard line. Redshirt freshman Chandler Harnish going over the top, and he's got his man once again, and yes, it is Palmer. Touchdown! 52 yards! Can you say star in the making in the MAC? 
Well, if I'm a defensive back, if I'm going to know where anybody is on the field, you better believe it's going to be number 81. He already gassed you for 91 yards. You put him on, you put the defense back on an island, and it happens again. You go one on one coverage. Northern Illinois says, all right, you want to go man to man? We're going to give the ball to our hoss and let him do what he does. <laughs> well, they told us he was electric, and boy, I tell you, moving up to the billing. <laughs> The extra point is good, and Northern Illinois has the lead. 8-0-9 left to be played. It is the Huskies who lead by three. Chandler Harnish over the top to Nathan Palmer. as low as 2.99% and up to $800 during the Power Play sales event. What would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song and I'll try not to sing your key. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. Yeah, I'm gonna try with a little help from my friends. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. A little help At Hampton, we love having you here. Increase power, performance, and gas mileage with Prestone Fuel System Cleaner and save up to $3.96 on a deal. Whatever you're working on, Advance will help you keep the wheels turning. That's Nathan Palmer, the redshirt freshman out of Elkhart, Indiana. Three catches, 170 yards, and two touchdowns. Meanwhile, the redshirt freshman quarterback, Chandler Hart, is 15 to 23, 296 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Twin safeties back deep to receive for Minnesota. The Gophers trailing for the first time tonight. Oh, and it's a pop fly kick and a fair catch signal made, and the catch completed at the 35-yard line. They were trying to show him a little razzle-dazzle, maybe a little trickery, and camp under it and make the uh, catch but uh, tower net makes the catch Nick tower net and there is uh, Chandler Harnish Harnish having a, a breakout okay day. now partner I was uh, saying to you before the game that I said you know why would they start a redshirt freshman on the road over a senior quarterback who had been to the program <laughs> I'm not wondering why anymore <laughs> This kid, uh, fortunately, we don't coach. <laughs> We'd be lost. Here we go. First down for Minnesota, the 35. Dewan Bennett getting nothing here. I'll tell you what. That Husky defense fired up. Corey Hanson, the linebacker, got in the middle of the fray. Loss of two, second and 12. Talk about Weber's development as a leader. Now is the time for him to step up. He's the glue for that offense. Keep his guys together and running and executing their offensive game plan. That's Decker at the top of your screen. They've got a slot set up to the bottom. Three man rush. Plenty of time for Weber and the pass undershot the intended receiver. And the intended receiver was wide open on the near side, Ralph Spry. Tonight's Polaris ATD toughest player of the game. 
Larry English. How about nine tackles, a sack, and two tackles behind the line of scrimmage? Well, he's been an absolute beast playing on the other side of the ball, forcing right in that game plan of making Adam Weber move his feet. Third down and 12 for Weber. 7.26 to go in the game. Weber. And latching on Jack Simmons, he may took a big hit from Chase Carter, but hangs on, and they're just short of the first down. Gain of 11 yards, it's fourth and one for Minnesota, and that's a short one. Watch the hit there, ooh. He did a nice job of catching that ball in traffic, because that is a shot that he takes. And he knew he was gonna get hit, and it was gonna be a high hit as well. Perfectly clean, but just the collision. So Simmons comes off. He had a 53 yard touchdown reception earlier tonight. It is fourth and inches and I think Tim Brewster wants a timeout and he does. He's going to talk this one over. 6.54 to go. In the football game Minnesota down by three. And they will face fourth in inches just short of their 45 yard line when we continue. So would you say here. Obviously a, perhaps a game changing decision right here. Coming up for Minnesota, Jerry Kill and company on the lead by three. between Minnesota and a first down. 6.54 left to go in the game. The Gophers are down to one timeout remaining, and they're gonna go for it as you would expect right here. This could be the game deciding play. Weber under center, quarterback sneak, and he's got it. The surge, he took it straight ahead across the 45 and picks up a crucial first down for Minnesota to keep this drive alive. That is crucial, and Coach Bruce, a good low pad level, exactly what you want. Creating a little seam, and Brewster showing that he has a lot of confidence in his team. Hey, he's asked his guys to buy into his philosophy and who he is. It's good for him to show he has confidence in them as well to go get a yard. First down, 46 yard line, Minnesota territory. Weber back into the spread. Decker cannot hang on. Alex Kuba was right there with him at the 46 yard line of Northern Illinois and it's second down and 10. Nice job of looking up Decker. I mean, that's just smart heads up play by the defense. I mean, you know that he has a number of catches. He had six on the very first drive. So every time that offense lines up, you got to identify where he is. Sophomore Adam Weber, there's his principal receiver, the junior Eric Decker. And Weber, a little bubble screen coming back for it. First down, Ralph Spry fumbled the football. Was he down by contact? Northern Illinois has it if he wasn't. Ralph Spry had a first down and a lot more inside the 40 yard line. Lost the football on the hit. He was not down by contact and off the turnover. It's going to belong to Northern Illinois. Jarred free by Josh Allen. And you talk about embodying Coach Kill's philosophy and toughness. How about not giving up on a play and going to rip that thing out? I mean, he has this team so fired up and believing and never giving up. That was absolute beautiful pursuit on the play and the wherewithal to strip the ball loose. And it looked like Larry English gathered it in. English makes the fumble recovery. And now Northern Illinois with just over six minutes to go in the game. Ralph Spry, tough moment for him. Can the Minnesota defense respond? Dancing, looking, searching for running room. Montel Clanton 
got back to the line of scrimmage. He probably ran 10 yards, but he got none. No credit on that one. Minnesota had him hemmed in pretty well as he danced around Deion Hightower and Garrett Brown team up on the tackle. Two turnovers now for the Golden Gophers in this game. We talked about and focused on Minnesota's ability to finish ball game. I mean, it was their Achilles heel last year. Certainly a point of emphasis going into camp by Brewster. And we see it again. These guys have to continue to battle and play hard and play with smarts. They give him a gain of a yard. Out of the shotgun. They fake the handoff. Heinrich able to get it away. It's incomplete. Boy, the Gophers all over that play. Willie Van in the end. Harris, the quarterback, into an errant throw. Now, Chris, we're watching a couple of spread offense teams here, and we've got this new 40-second clock, and the 40-second clock is when the ball is spotted for play. A 40-second clock begins. That's how much time they have to get the play off. And I wonder, you know, the defensive coordinators love it because it shortens the game by six to ten plays. Sure. The offensive coordinator, of course, sitting there saying, we need more plays. Right. No, it makes perfect sense. It's, it's a more fluid fashion. But defensively, you're happy about that because it does shorten the play. Well, offensively, you've got to get your play in in a hurry. You've got to make sure you're on top of it. Third and nine for Northern Illinois and a timeout call. Chandler Harnish was down to about one to go on the play clock. And a penalty marker thrown on the other side of the field. There's a penalty marker down here. And I'm wondering if they didn't get the timeout called in time. Okay, there we go. That's the explanation. So 5.25 to go. We talked earlier tonight at how important this game is for Tim Brewster and his program. He has sold this program very well from the very beginning. He's persevered through a 1-11 campaign with six losses of seven points or less a year ago. He had one of the best recruiting classes in the country this past winter. All through the fall camp. Not only selling the football program and the team and the vision to his players, but also to the community up here. This is so important that Minnesota get off to a good start following a school record 1-11 and campaign. Oh, it's critical. And as a former player, I can tell you that and if, unless you start substantiating your philosophies, your messages, your speeches with W's, then all of a sudden the players aren't going to take to that message. Huge third down call here both ways each side one timeout left 525 to go blitz coming harnish has time and the pass under thrown it's fourth down for northern illinois steve davis able to put some pressure on the quarterback but a gutsy call defensively, partner, bringing that many on the blitz. And I like the call. I mean, Harness has shown you that he can be a field general and scan the field when he's comfortable. He can make all the throws, make him uncomfortable, put him under duress. Good play call that time by Ted Roof. Andy Dittbenner in punt formation for Northern Illinois. The Huskies lead by three. Knee high snap. Booming kick. Sherrills with a fair catch signal early makes the catch at the 26 yard line. So another shot for the Minnesota Golden Gopher offense led by sophomore quarterback Adam Weber. They trail by four, a little over five minutes to go in the game, and they've got it at their 26-yard line. Big Ten tonight, your ultimate source for all things Big Ten, including highlights, analysis of all of today's action, interviews, and so much more. Big Ten tonight, 11 p.m. Eastern, 10 Central, only on the Big Ten Network. Wayne Larrabee, Chris Martin, Ron Johnson at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Can the Gophers come back here? One timeout left, 5.15 to go. 74 yards away from the lead score. First down. Decker gets a good block off the flank. But good pursuit by Northern Illinois. And a short gain of barely a yard to the 27-yard line. Chase Carter closed quickly. Well, he did. And we talk about the experience of the secondary for Northern Illinois. And they have come to play. I mean, they've tackled guys in the open field. They get there in a hurry. And when they hit you, you go down. I mean, there's no yards after catch. Watch this. Upon contact, you go right to the ground. And that's exactly what you teach and exactly what you want for your defensive coordinator. Second and nine. Weber 
Throws a strike. First down, 42-yard line. Latching on, Ben Kuznia, the junior from Oliva, Minnesota. Mike Sobel made the tackle. First and 10, out across the 40 at the 42-yard line. Well, you're going to see it's just a soft zone here. Again, these plays take time. Allowing the receiver to sit in the hole. Good job of clearing the linebacker and finding the soft spot in the defense. Beautiful throw for 16 yards from Adam Weber. First and 10. Over the middle and almost the 50 yard line for Dwan Bennett. Tim McCarthy made a sure tackle in the middle of the Northern defense. Big day in the Big Ten. Buckeyes get a victory, but Beanie Wells suffered a foot injury. Deja Blue Wolverines lost their second straight season opener. Good Utah team went in there tonight and got them. And the Lions and Paterno win big. 336 to go for the game. Minnesota trailing by three. Weber. Wide open over the middle. Latching on. Got a first down and more. And that is the tight end, Nick Towernet. Sobel and McCarthy on the tackle. First and 10, 17 yard strike. Give credit to that offensive line, giving Weber plenty of time to scan the field and to find Tower Net. Does a good job of holding on. Look at the ball security, protecting it with both arms. The Gophers first down at the Northern Illinois 35 yard line. Minnesota trailing by three with three minutes to go. Weber over the middle. Another receiver wide open over the middle. And he's got Ben Kuznia for a first down inside the 15 yard line. Kyrie Daniels on the tackle along with David Bryan. Well, Wayne, when you get these soft zones, your linebackers have to continue to get depth. You see it there, the linebacker shortens up his drop, allowing Kuznia to open up over the middle. Keep dropping back and taking away the deep throw. 23-yard pass play, and the Gophers at the doorstep trailing by three. Two and a half minutes to go for the game. the gift. This is Bennett, and he's rolled down near the 10-yard line. Hotels.com, a red zone territory for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. And they have a second down coming up off a gain of barely a yard. This is where Larry English has to step up. He's been that guy all night. He's got to step up, make a play for his team in crunch time here. Larry English, they're moving him from left side to right side. On occasion here tonight, under two minutes to go for the game. Bennett in motion. On second down, a quarterback draw. Weber inside the five, roped down near the four-yard line. Connor Chris made a touchdown saving tackle. That's just a nice play call by Mike Dunbar. How do you isolate and go away from a superstar? Well, you do just that. You run away from Larry English, call a design draw play, give your quarterback a chance to make plays with his legs. Excellent play call. Good scheme. Third down, about two yards to go. Minnesota at the four-yard line. Of Northern Illinois from the shotgun. And here's the give. Bennett off the right side in traffic brought down near the three yard line. Gain of barely a yard. They did not pick up the first down. McCarthy able to root him out. And decision time here. It'd be fourth and one. It's a three point ball game. And it looks like the Gophers are going to go for it. Or are they? Timeout called with 38 seconds to go. Minnesota. to the Gophers to the doorstep three yards away from what would be the lead score and perhaps the winning score. Northern Illinois has one timeout remaining. You have to wonder if they're starting to see a bit of flashbacks to last season opener and that triple overtime loss. This is a major play and, and it certainly defines 
what this team and who this team's identity is going to be. This is critical for Minnesota. Again, we talked about the vision of Brewster getting his team to buy into his blueprint and what he's trying to accomplish for the program. We're going to see it all here in a play. Well, there have been a couple of interesting calls here in this fourth quarter on this particular drive that began with 515 to go in the game Chris they had another fourth down call at their 46 yard line that they were able to convert can they do it here that was fourth and in inches this is fourth and it looks to be a full yard to go Brewster could kick the field goal here and basically send this thing into overtime but perhaps he's sending a message by saying hey does he send a message if he sends them out there, the offense, get the first down, get the touchdown, get the win? No question about it. He is defining his team and defining his per his personality. They are putting it all on the line, all offseason and everything. Weber and the shotgun, fourth down, a yard to go. Handoff to Bennett up the middle of the end zone. Is he in? No, but he's got a first down. First down and goal to go, 34 seconds remaining to be played in the game. Could it be any more intense of a situation here? Doesn't get the touchdown, but does get the first down. Crunch time. First and goal inside the one. Bennett again, driving, touchdown! Brewster, you talk to your team about being hard-nosed, being a fighter, and finishing every snap, and you're giving them a dose of, of exactly what you want them to become. That attitude, or that belief, and finish, you just saw it right there in that play. Minnesota leads 30-27. to 27. An all-important point after by Joel Monroe. And the lead is three for Minnesota. 22 seconds and one timeout remaining. I beg your pardon, it is four. It's a four point lead, 31 27, with 22 seconds remaining. I had to get my math straight now, there, partner. <laughs> if I'm Minnesota, whatever I do, I'm going to find number 81 for Northern Illinois. <laughs> and make sure that there's a few bodies on him. Well, you could expect, I would think here, a squib kick of some sort. Take some more time off that clock. Northern has one timeout remaining, but they're down by four. We talked about Brewster sending a message, not only to Northern Illinois, but to the Big Ten Conference. And the one thing that resonated with me is he told us yesterday, he said, you know, you, you are who you decide you're going to be. And I think that's the message that he wanted to send to his team in that last play call and certainly on going for it on fourth down. Four point lead Minnesota. It'll take a touchdown to beat the Gophers. 22 seconds to go for Northern Illinois. One timeout left. See, I knew Monroe's kick was crucial there. Chris <laughs> just had the math wrong. <laughs> Boy, Tim Brewster, some gutsy calls on that last drive. Took almost all of the final five minutes and 15 seconds of the fourth quarter. Monroe. Yep, there's the squib. Bounding across the 20. Oh, and it goes out of bounds. Goodness. That is not what they were planning. So now, Northern Illinois will get this football at their 40 yard line. Number 22. We have a free kick out of bounds by the kicking team. They elect to take the ball at the 40 yard line. Please put 22 seconds on the game clock. 
We talked about the rule changes, the 40-second play clock, but take a look down there at number four. Kickoff out of bounds. Now maybe placed to the 40-yard line. And Northern Illinois with a timeout left, 22 seconds to go, and they are 60 yards away. And prevent defense. Playing very soft. Nathan Palmer, second from the bottom of your screen in the slot. He has two huge touchdown receptions, a 91-yarder earlier tonight. Harnish dumps it off short and across the 50 first down in play to the running back Ricky Kreider. Down to 16 seconds to go now as they reset the sticks. And Harnish stops the clock, grounding the football legally. 16 seconds left. Jerry Kill again still one timeout remaining and he's 48 yards away from the winning score. They've been using Eric Decker in the deep portion of the secondary way back beyond the safeties. Eric Decker, the wide receiver, is playing the deepest safety position. And again, Harnish has to go over the middle and short. And that was the design of the defense to force that throw. Now second down, make it to first down. Second down, second and 10. Harnish spiked the ball on the first down play to stop the clock. The officials, I think, want the clock to be readjusted. It looks like it might be a 16-second showing. Are they holding it up because they want the clock readjusted or not? Put 15. There. Yeah, 15 seconds. That's what they wanted. Took a second off the clock. Chandler Harnish in his first collegiate start. Can he lead a dramatic miracle come from behind win? Over the middle he goes once again to Kreider. Kreider across the 30 down to the 30 yard line just inside the 30. They're going to mark it right there. Eight seconds showing on the clock. You have to be careful running that prevent. Giving up those alleys and lanes underneath. Timeout taken by Northern. Everybody's out of timeouts. Eight seconds to go. Well, if you're the Golden Gophers and defensive coordinator Ted Roof, I guess job one is to find number 81, Nathan Palmer. <laughs> that would be first and foremost. And they've used the wide receiver, Eric Decker, as a deep safety, the deepest of safeties, I might add. What a ball game this has been, right down the wire. Well, like we said earlier, a battle of two teams that recognized they were 1-11 and 2-10 and two and two and respectively last year. And they're putting it all on the line. The reason they have Decker back there, to your point, Wayne, is so he can high point the football in any jump ball situation. There's Decker. Eight seconds to go. This is ball game. Chandler to the end zone and broken up incomplete. Trying to get it to Britt Davis at the goal line. Nathan Triplett, among others, in coverage. Oh, it was great convergence. And that looked like a catchable ball. Sure did, right at the pylon. Watch him, he would tumble back at the pylon, but he could not hang on. Kyle Therrett was there as well. Three seconds remaining, one more play. Put this ball in the end zone. Yeah, make sure it gets to the end zone. That one almost didn't. Harnish. Pop flies. Knocked down incomplete. And the Gophers have hung on to win. Minnesota hangs on to win the opener. Eric Decker, the wide receiver, played defensive back to swat it away and deny the Huskies an opening night upset. And look at this crowd. Look at those players, the emotion and what this means to those guys.
guys watch Decker. We talked about high pointing the ball. He's a receiver, so he knows how to do it. Smart to have him in there. Well, he's made a lot of catches tonight, but none bigger than making that play and knocking down and getting a PBU. Both teams congratulating each other. Whale of a ball game. Minnesota wins at 31-27 over the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Down to Ron Johnson with Tim Brewster. Ron? Wayne, thought, thanks a lot. Well, Coach, these are the games last year you didn't win. Last year's last year. How about getting this one? You know what? It's about time for the good guys to win a game. I'll tell you what. That was a great ball game. I give all the credit in the world to Jerry Kill and Northern Illinois. They played their hearts out. But I'll tell you what. I'm glad we won. The final offensive drive. Your quarterback, who's apparently just a redshirt sophomore, looked like a leader out there, and you give it to a running back who wasn't really established much last year with the injuries. How much growth is that for your offense? Well, Adam Weber is a hell of a leader, and he led our football team in crunch time, and he did what great quarterbacks do, and that's take your team down the field and go score when you need to. Dewan Bennett had his nose for the goal line, and he got it done. Coach, thanks a lot. Thank you. Appreciate Big Ten Network. All right, let's go back upstairs. Thank you, Ron. Tonight's Hampton Hotels winning play of the game. It came on first down at the goal line. Dewan Bennett, one yard touchdown run. That gave Minnesota a three point lead. The extra point made it a four point advantage. Touchdown at Hampton. Wake up a winner. The Gophers win here tonight 31 to 27 over the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Chris, outstanding ball game. Both teams went at it tooth and nail. We knew Northern Illinois would uh, would not be uh, in awe of this situation, and they certainly weren't. They gave the Gophers everything they could handle. Oh, they did, and earned a lot of respect, a lot of fight on both sides of the ball. No team refusing to give up. They played this one to the end. So again, Minnesota over Northern Illinois for Ron Johnson, and Chris Martin, and our entire crew. Wayne Larrabee saying so long from the Metrodome. Let's go to the. Welcome you into our post-game report. Great to have you with us here on the Big Ten Network. Dave Revson, Jerry Donardo, and Howard Griffith. A much-needed win <laughs> for the Golden Gophers as they break what was tied for the longest losing streak in school history. Gutsy call by Tim Brewster down near the goal line. They're going for it on fourth down, saying, hey, we're not going to go into overtime. We're going to try to win it. Gutsy call and a good call because it worked. I'd have kicked the field goal. <laughs> but you know what? Give Minnesota a lot of credit for fighting back. You know, the defense gave up some big plays the first half. Uh, I'm sorry, the second half. But the first half, they looked like they were going to be a decent defense. And I think they will the time the season's over. We watched them make some of those calls last year and end up on the short end of the stick. This year, they found a way to pull it out. Congratulations to Minnesota. A good win for the Golden Gophers. A team, as you mentioned, Howard, lost six games by a touchdown or less. Last year, plenty more reaction on that game, but let's get you caught up on the rest of the day in Big Ten football. And we start you with Rich Rodriguez's debut as Michigan's head coach, taking on Utah at the Big House. And Nick Sheridan got the nod at quarterback for the Wolverines over Stephen Three. A QB would be a bit of a problem. After a Utah turnover, though, Michigan third and eight. Sheridan looking for Sam McGuffey, and it looks like Robert Johnson picked it off, but Utah flag for pass interference.